from his studios in New York. It's time for Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life. Here's your host, Dan Tortora. Welcome here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. Happy to be here with you this morning on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Appreciate you hanging out with us here on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. That is the live feed. It is free. It is easy. So make sure that you join. If you have not become a member and you're just listening right now, Make sure that you become a member simply by clicking follow under my picture, and that'll take you into a, what, two-minute, maybe, uh, connection to the show. You just put in an email and make a username for it. That'll connect you with the broadcast, and every single time the show goes live, you'll be sent an email to all of your devices saying that Wake Up Call is live. Would you like to listen? All you have to do in your email is is click on yes, click to listen, and you're good to go. So if you haven't become a member, make it easier on yourself and become a member. Members also get to chat with me in the live chat room, and that's exclusive to membership. Membership is free, so please join on MixLR.com backslash DT so you can connect with the show and keep it rolling whenever the show is live. And if we do a live impromptu show outside of our typical Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time, if we do it outside of that like we have done with the South Florida, Central Florida game, the rivalry game, the battle for Florida, the war on I-4, whatever you'd like to call it, when those moments happen, you're the first one to know. So make sure that you join on MixLR.com backslash wake up call dt if you haven't already today is a jam-packed show i'm ecstatic about this they have their first game coming up december 2nd and it's going to be against christian brothers academy and that is the west genesee wildcats and i'm ecstatic to be able to play this for you we did a live show at the wildcat sports pub in camillus new york and over at the wildcat we had a great opportunity to get in front of the community as we always do once a month with a live show there Make sure you stay close to Facebook at Wake Up Call DT, on Twitter at Call DT, and on Instagram at Wake Up Call underscore DT. Because on each of those outlets, including WakeUpCallDT.com, we connect with you and let you know when we're going to be doing live broadcasts, where we're going to be, how long we're going to be there, all the information that you need, and you have an opportunity to be the first to know if you have liked the page on Facebook. And if you follow me on Twitter and Instagram, you're going to know first and foremost when that event's going to be and how you can connect with it and all the information that you need. So for those of you that haven't, make sure that you follow on Twitter at CallDT, Instagram at WakeUpCall underscore DT, and that you like the page on Facebook at WakeUpCallDT so you never miss a live event again. And after all live events, we take the time shortly after to share it with you. So those of you that are live on location, you already got to hear this over a week ago. And for those of you that were not able to make it, now with them going into their first game, I thought that that it was fitting to share with you the West Genesee Wildcats once again. So for those of you that have not heard them on the airwaves, I now proudly bring them to you right after this fast break. In the morning menu, proudly presented by the Market Diner on 2100 Park Street in Syracuse, New York. I'm very, very appreciative to the Market Diner and to what we have there, which is the Dan Satora Special, Belgian waffle cut in half, filled with a bacon, egg, and cheese omelet. It is absolutely amazing. It's my spin on the breakfast sandwich, and it's a lot of fun, and I want to thank everybody that's gone out and gotten their spin on my breakfast sandwich over at the Market Diner and exclusively there. In today's morning menu, we will start off with the West Genesee Wildcats boys varsity basketball team. As they, as they, you know, as I said, going into this December 2nd, which is this coming Saturday, is their first game. It's going to be up against Christian Brothers Academy. So going into that game, I want you to hear from the team. You're going to hear from them sports-wise, what they think about each other, the makeup of the team, the culture, the environment, 
you know, how they've gelled together, what they've worked on. You're going to hear what Coach Fred Kent has to say about the team. You're going to hear from players Will Amica, Luke Sutherland, Liam Barry, and Drew Kiefer on what they think about the program. And then we are going to go into rapid fire, which is something I've done for years on the show, which gives me an opportunity to learn more about the players and about Coach in a totally different way. It has nothing to do with sports. And we get to, you know, rapid fire is essentially I ask you questions that you have no idea what's coming, has nothing to do with sports, and you got to give me the first answer that comes to your mind. And then outside of that, they give me the rapid fire segment. I put myself on the chopping block, so to speak. I give my, I, I put myself in, in, uh, in, in the hot seat and I allow them to, to have an opportunity to ask me questions because it's only fair that if I'm going to put them on the hot seat, that I go on the hot seat myself. And I don't know if every broadcaster feels that way, but I like to create that fair opportunity. And I think it's fun for the kids. I think it's fun for coach. And we always have a good time doing it. So first and foremost, you will hear from the West Genesee Wildcats boys varsity basketball team with their head coach, Fred Kent, and players Will Amica, Liam Berry, Drew Kiefer, and Luke Sutherland. Then later on in the show, you will hear around 10 a.m., right in the second hour of the show from 10 to 11 a.m. Eastern Time, you will hear my segment, as we always do on a Tuesday show. Typically at 9 a.m., it's going to be pushed back to 10 a.m. today for the West Genesee Wildcats. So at 10 a.m. around that time, you'll hear on the prowl Jacksonville Jaguars coverage after their nail-biter against the Arizona Cardinals on the road in Phoenix. And then we will go wall-to-wall NFL Week 12 coverage, what I took away from the games happening here as we edge closer and closer to your fantasy football playoffs and to the actual playoffs. And then we will get into ingredients to success to round out this Tuesday's show as we round out every Tuesday's show. Proudly brought to you by Utica Pizza Company, the best pizza around, and you can get to them at 628 South Main Street in North Syracuse, New York, in the Mains Plaza across from Sweetheart Corners. Make sure that you pop over there and show them some love. You can also order takeout. You can have things catered, and you can pick. And you can obviously uh, have delivery as well within a, a radius around Utica Pizza Company at 628 South Main Street in North Syracuse, New York. So make sure that you go over there and hang out with them. We'll take a fast break, and we'll come back with the West Genesee Wildcats in just a moment. This is a wake-up call. Fast break. Carvel DeWitt, it's what happy tastes like. Do you know why? Because we make ice cream. Creamy, rich, flavorful ice cream. Not yogurt or ice milk like some of our competitors. Ice cream. Fresh, by hand, daily. For the calorie conscious, we have something new for you. Our new Carvelite. Same great flavor, creaminess, and texture of our regular ice cream with only 35 calories an ounce. So whether you want an ice cream cake, flying saucer, dasher, carvalanche, hard or soft ice cream, we will satisfy your craving with our fresh, handmade, regular, or new Carvelite ice cream. Carvel DeWitt. It's what happy tastes like. Clothing that will change with you without you having to change. DrysigLady.com, D-R-E-I-S-S-I-G, Lady.com. With the bamboo line, relaxed fit clothing, as well as the athletic fit clothing, DrysigLady.com is fit for any woman, any time of the day, anywhere. Whatever you're doing, whatever your day commands of you, Command yourself to feel comfortable in Dreisig Lady Apparel. D-R-E-I-S-S-I-G Lady.com. For all the women out there, feel good in what you're wearing. And don't feel like you have to constantly change throughout the day. Whether you're a stay-at-home mom, a business owner, going for a jog, going for a meeting, or just relaxing at home, DreisigLady.com is the right fit for you. D-R-E-I-S-S-I-G, lady.com. This is Lawrence Papaleo, licensed real estate salesperson for Gilbo Realty. Call our home office at 315-752-9513, or better yet, call or text me directly at 315-748-2524. Let me ask you a question, Lawrence. If I needed you to help me buy a house, find the right place, could you help me do that? Joe, I'll help you find your dream home. You don't ever say my name on the radio, never. If I needed to sell a house, could you help me go about that the right way? Yes, yes I can. How do they get a hold of you? 
Call me directly at 315-748-2524. But you also do the commercial property. So if I got a business, couple businesses, got to take one here, move it over there, do this, do that. Are you going to help me buy and sell my commercial property also? Yes, sir. I like that. I like that. What's my name again? I have no idea. Absolutely. But they need to know your name, so give it one more time. This is Lawrence Papaleo, licensed real estate salesperson for Gilbo Realty. My phone number is 315-748-2524. Why don't you tell them your name one more time and that number so we can jot it down. This is Lawrence Papaleo. Call me or text me directly at 315-748-2524. The Market Diner prides itself on bringing the local community fresh ingredients that are better than going elsewhere. Open for breakfast, served all day, lunch and dinner with daily specials. The Market Diner is located at the Regional Market on Park Street, right across from Destiny, USA. For takeout, call 315-474-5247. The Market Diner. Local. Fresh. Better. All right, so we are here live on location with the West Genesee Wildcats boys varsity basketball team. I'm Dan Tortora of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, live on location with you once a month. We've been here with the football team. We're now here for the first time with the basketball squad. Next to me on my right is head coach Fred Kent. We also have Liam Berry here, Drew Kiefer, as well as Will Amica and Luke Sutherland. Gentlemen, how are we doing today? How are you guys doing? Well, you feel free to answer. You can use the mic. He hands it over to Liam. I'm good. All right. <laughs> Very good. Have you guys ever done anything like this before? No, no. Nothing, Drew? No. Never before? Never. Never. Okay. Never close. Coach, have you ever been out doing something like this? I know you get interviewed, but have you ever sat out and had an opportunity and not known what was coming? We did uh, a Saturday radio show on 620 probably three years ago, and that was pretty nerve-wracking. Pretty nerve-wracking. All right. Fair enough. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the upcoming season. We're also going to uh, do something called Rapid Fire. And that'll give me an opportunity to ask you guys questions that have nothing to do with basketball. Try and throw you off a little bit. But then, in fairness, you get to do that right back to me. So, Luke, I'm going to start with you first and foremost. What's on your mind for this season? What, what are some of those key words that you think about when you think about this team? Um, I think that us as a team, I, I see a lot from us. You know, um, we're, a lot of teams don't like see us as finishing on the top but I feel like if we play how we can and we just work hard I feel like we can be up there. What is it about this team that makes you believe that you can have a better finish than maybe what people expect? Um, we have a we have a lot of talent you know we're really young a lot of the teams haven't really seen a lot of the guys play so um, if they showcase their ability as well I mean in practice it's showing so if we just work hard every game and we play as a team we, we can we can beat the best. Well, I want to ask you about this season, just what you've taken away so far, the few practices that you've had, what you've seen from not only yourself, but the rest of the team. Um, I feel like we're really athletic this year. Uh, I feel like we're really athletic this year. Um, I feel like we're pretty talented. We should be good this year. We should have a lot of, a lot of success, I guess. What makes you believe that there's going to be success? We play well together. Um, we we move the ball good. We don't we don't be selfish. We're not selfish. We should be good. And I want to I want to ask you, Drew. What do you think about this year's team? What makes you excited about the upcoming season? Uh, I think we're a very young team, but uh, very talented, and I think we could uh, surprise a lot of people this year. And, and that's something that Luke had said about surprising. What makes you believe that this could be the team that does exactly that? Uh, just how just how young and athletic we are, and it, like Luke said, uh, a lot of people haven't seen us play, so they don't really know what's coming for them. When you look at a, a season, and Coach, we're going to talk about this in a second, but when there are those question marks and people don't know what to expect from this year's team, does that make you excited about the opportunity of kind of being that wild card this year? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it definitely uh, gives us an opportunity to show what we have and uh, kind of catch people off guard. William, I want to ask you about what's, uh, what are some words to describe this year? You've heard from your teammates. How would you describe this year? 
Uh, like they all said, we're definitely young, but I was just on the football team, and we were young there. But uh, we had the, uh, the young kids step up, and that's what they're going to do this year with basketball. And you said, you know, young team on the football side, and you had an opportunity to go out there and do some things. This year's team, where's the leadership? Do you feel like there's a, a leader out there already? Um, I think the leadership's everywhere. Uh, our three captains, we have a sophomore, junior, and a senior as a captain, so it spread out. And coach, you've heard, you've heard the guys talk about it. You've heard what they see in this year's team. What are you seeing so far? Uh, a lot of potential. I, I see a, a good group of kids, most importantly. Um, this team gets along very well. Uh, they're very unselfish. And uh, most importantly, I think there's a, a willingness to learn. Like we know that a big part of, of our preseason is about growth. And um, I think each day in practice, we're really we're looking to grow as a group. And we're very competitive against each other. And I, I think with, with those elements in place, we'll be fine. What is it right now? I mean, obviously, every coach wants to win games. Every coach wants to have the blueprint for that. But when you're in practice day to day, what are some of those main focal points that you're working on? Uh, right now, early in the season, it's about installation. We're just trying to install as many things as possible, execution. Uh, a big concern for us right now is conditioning. So I don't think the guys like hearing that, but uh, you know we need to get in game shape and play at game speed for 32 minutes. We're not there yet, um, but right now it's just about execution and defensively getting down our rotations. And with these guys, they are young, and we need to learn how to communicate. Um, this, this is a good night for this because they're talking more than than we do on defense right now. So. The more we communicate, the happier I'll be. Then I don't have to talk as much. When I played in high school, they said to be loud on defense, put your hands up. And usually the more vocal person was made fun of by other guys on the team for being so vocal or being, you know, telling everybody to get their hands up. Do you have to yell at the guys to get their hands up and be vocal? I mean, is that is that a day-to-day -day thing, or are they getting better at it? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I, I thought you were a wrestler. But, um, I'm, it's good you play basketball. Um, we, you know, we're kind of like a library right now. It, it is quiet, and, and I don't like quiet practices. I like guys talking, yelling, motivating, and uh, we're on our way, but we're not where we want to be there in that aspect. Well, you know, I want to ask you about that uh, conditioning and being on that side of it. You know, uh, in high school, suicides were my least favorite thing to do. This coach give you a bunch of suicides? Is there another type of run that you don't like? What's what's the conditioning like? They're called ladders. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. All right. So they're tied laps down and back, and they progressively get um, more laps with more time, but they get harder. Do you feel like it's something that you're getting used to, or do you never get used to ladders? Oh, yeah. You definitely get used to them after the first couple of days. Uh, you should get used to them. Drew, conditioning, what can you say about what can you say about that side of it? Uh, it's definitely a lot of work, uh, but after after a little while, you start getting used to it, and it's just I don't know, it's just a thing that you come to expect to every day of practice. When you hear coach say that he wants you guys to talk a little bit more, is that something that's on your mind as well? Is uh, it something that's kind of clear on defense? Yeah, I think we are a very quiet team. Uh, we definitely could talk a lot more, but uh, that's just coming with getting together closer as a team, I feel like then we'd start talking more. Well, what can you say about that, being more vocal? Is that something that you'd like to take charge of, or how do you see yourself in the game? Yeah, as a point guard, I need to be a leader, so I need to tell people if they're not in the right spot, I need to tell them where to go. And if on defense, when we play in Wildcat, I'm the lead, so I just need to show them. I just need to show people where to go. When you look at, like you said, as a point guard, you know, you're the floor general, how much pressure do you feel with a team that's new with a lot of question marks and the expectations really not out there because people don't know, as, as your teammates said and you said, people don't know what to expect of this team. What can you say about being the floor general of a team that has the opportunity to create some surprises this year? I mean, we can all do stuff, so, so it's kind of easy because everybody knows, everybody has like an idea of what to do. So I, I don't really, really have to do that much. Everybody really knows what to do, basically. Now, well, Luke, what can you say? I mean, be, about being one of the uh, the bigger guys out there, you know, calling for the ball, commanding for the ball. How comfortable are you feeling underneath right now? Um, I mean, we have we have guards that 
do a really good job of giving up the ball. They know when to give it up, and they just they're really good at putting players in situations where they know they can score, and they they're they're, they're unbelievable at recognizing situations where that I can get the ball and score, and I'm 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 happy for that. Being vocal out there, would you consider that something that you do already, or something that you want to work on? I definitely from last year. I like a, a really big improvement from like the communication standpoint, but there's obviously room to grow for everyone, and especially for me, I'm in the back of the zone. I'm, I'm I see everything, so I gotta I gotta make sure everyone knows what they're doing. I gotta make sure there's no flaws, so that's all on me. What can you say about the zone? What what do you like about playing zone? I like the fact that um, it it's a different look for us. You know, a lot of a lot of teams. A lot of other teams in the uh, league are going to be playing man, so I think a zone look is going to be something different for other teams that they won't really be used to. And uh, I think we're length enough; we have enough length for that to be successful. Coach in Central New York, the zone seems to work. What are you excited about with the zone? Uh, you know, it's not just about the zone. We you know, we play a lot of man too. I I believe personally about being multiple. You know, um, in our zone we have man to man principles, so we. You know, we try to really focus on that and then add to it so we can be multiple and, and throw different looks at our opponents. Um, with us, you know, we've mentioned it a couple of times, it's just about communication and identifying our assignments defensively and sticking to you know, our scouting report, and uh, we'll be fine. Integrating a plan, like you said, right now it's about implementing what you need to do. When you are multiple and you have that switching back and forth, you know, I've worked with coaches in the past that in practice they would just continue to switch to see if everybody was in the right spot, doing what they need to do. Do you take each practice to implement an individual scheme, or do you like to switch it up and change it up during practice? Uh, we try to hit all phases whenever we can. Uh, day before practice, you know, depending on the game plan, we probably spend a little bit more time on our first option as far as what we want to do defensively. But um, preseason-wise, we're really trying to nail down our, our defensive fundamentals, rotations, um, slides, things like that, and then build off of that. I don't, I don't like the dabbing and everything, and then perfect nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Drew, I want to, I want to ask you about leadership on the team. Who would you say, right now, would be a leader on this program? Uh, probably, probably Luke. He's probably the most experienced guy on the team. Uh, he definitely, definitely shows it in practice uh, how to be a leader and showing some of the younger guys what to do. Well, when you say that he shows it in practice, what does he do that sticks out to you? Um, just correcting a lot of uh, simple mistakes that players could easily make during a game. Uh, trying to practice good habits during practice. Trying to correct some of the stuff that they do. William, what would you say as far as leadership goes? Would you second that, or is there another leader you want to mention? Uh, yeah, Luke and Will. I mean, Luke just carries himself as a kid who's experienced. He's not someone who's trying to follow in the steps of someone. He's looking to make a presence. And Will being a point guard, just directing everybody, knowing the offense and telling them where to go. All right, guys. Well, on this side, you got you were given that leadership title from your teammates. So, Luke, I want to go to you first. How would you respond to that? And leadership-wise, what would you say? Uh, I knew I knew that since we graduated nine seniors last year, I knew someone had to step up. And I, I saw this as a time for me to really assert myself with this team and make sure that I'm someone that they can come talk to in a time of need. And uh, I just it's just fun. that We have a group of kids who really enjoy getting better, and I'm just happy that I can be a part of that. Well, what would you say, leadership-wise? Obviously, as the floor general, you got to have that. How would you respond to what Liam said about you being a leader? Like what Luke said, we had nine seniors last year, so somebody, like people, had to step up. So I knew that I had to. I'm going to ask you a, a question that is a little bit outside of the box, but not really because it is in Central New York. Having a team with so much changeover, and, and Coach, I want to start with you with this. Does it help to look at other teams and, and what they're doing to look at somebody, you know, collegially or professionally that might be going through some changeover for that mentorship? I mean, do you look at Syracuse and all the difference they have this year and maybe try to take something away from that? Um, well, that's a good question. I think as players, as individuals, I think some of these guys have favorite players and they try to emulate that. I think as a team, 
I really think, you know, we, we've really tried to form our own identity as far as our own culture as a team. So we don't really try copying anybody. Um, you know, we, we are who we are, and we, we try to stick to our system and our program and, and really just work on, on us and developing chemistry and, and our culture. Is newness to you adversity or an opportunity? Oh, definitely an opportunity. Um, and I got to give uh, these guys a lot of credit. We had a, a great senior group, and one of my concerns was that they would try to copulate, copy or emulate the guys before them, but they've kind of taken their own identity and, and turned themselves into leaders without having to copy so it's real. You know, that they're, they're, they're being true to themselves and they're, and they're spreading them, their wings to the team, which is nice. William, I, I want to ask you one word that best describes Coach Kemp. Ladders run away. Fit. <laughs> Fair enough. True. True. What would you say? I would have to go. I would have to go. Uh, it, uh, fit, probably fit. You gotta pick. You gotta pick a different word. Uh, athletic. Yeah, athletic. I okay. Athletic. Well, well. Let's see. Do you have a different theme that you can use for coach? All right. Here. I got funny. He always sounded a joke. Funny. Always sound a joke. <laughs> Is 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 he truly funny? No. I mean, sometimes, like, sometimes his jokes don't make sense, but laughs at all. Luke, what would you say? What's one word to describe coach? Interesting. Interesting. Okay, elaborate on interesting a little bit. He's just a he's a fun guy. You know? Okay. Well coach, in fairness, I'm gonna let you go around the table. What's one word to describe Luke? Goofy. <laughs> what about Will? Silly. <laughs> what about Drew? <laughs> Questionable. Okay. And, and what about Liam? Neon. He's always wearing neon. He's always wearing neon stuff. <laughs> neon, neon what? What do you got? He's always got... I, he, I should prove me wrong right now, but he always has some type of neon color on. Do you have neon on right now? Uh, He's always wearing like a pink or a yellow, green, uh, orange, any of the neon colors. Are you wearing that under the jersey to try and mess with the eyes of the teams you're going up against? I mean, is there an advantage to neon? Uh, long sleeve gang. <laughs> What did you say? Long sleeve game. Long sleeve, long sleeve game. That's what you said. Is that is that is that gang? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm, okay. Describe your long sleeve gang. It's a shooter thing. Uh, okay. Yeah. We started it. Okay. Wear long sleeves every day. All right. Fair enough. Well, we're gonna take a step aside here with the guys and with coach when we come back we're going to play rapid fire i will ask a bunch of questions to you gentlemen that have nothing to do with basketball so be ready for that and then after that i will be fair to let you do that as well so for liam barry drew Kiefer, as well as coach fred kent will amica luke sutherland and myself dan tortora we're happy that you're here today we appreciate it very much so this is wake up call with dan tortora live on location at the wildcat and we will be back where anything goes in rapid fire in just a couple minutes. This is a wake up call, fast break. Hey, wake up call listeners, this is Tom Taylor, owner of Sammy Malone's, located at 2 Oswego Street in Baldwinsville, New York, overlooking the beautiful Seneca River. We proudly open our doors to you seven days a week, beginning at 11 a.m. daily, with free parking. Whether it's game day, after work drinks, or a meal with family and friends, we are honored that you come visit us. Call 315-635-5407 for parties and catering. I'll see you at Sammy Malone's, home of the best sandwich in Beeville. Hi, this is Domenico Vitale, owner of Giovanni's Formalware. 
where you look great and feel even better with our renowned tailoring and alteration services on any suit or any tuxedo from anywhere. Call 315-455-8729. That's 315-455-8729. Stop in locally on Route 11 in North Syracuse next to the Ponderosa Plaza where you can choose your style, get fitted, and tailored all at Giovanni's Formal Wear. I'm George Townsend of Honda City with some good advice when buying a new car. The true cost of owning a new car is determined by the appraised value when you trade it. No vehicle appraises higher than a Honda. Next, look for low APRs and deep discounts. You also want low maintenance costs and great fuel economy. That's why my advice to you is to buy a new Honda. Looking pre-owned, visit our Honda Certified Used Car Center. Honda City, 7140 Henry Clay Boulevard, Liverpool, or hondacity-cny.com. It would be a pity if you don't shop. For all of us that have always wanted our favorite restaurant to come to us, it's now a reality in Central New York with It's a Utica Thing, with Utica Pizza Company bringing their wonderful recipes that they've handed down through generations to you, to your event, to your business, to your home. It's a Utica Thing, proudly bringing Utica Pizza Company on wheels to your location. Call 315-738-8946. That's 315 315- 738-8946 to bring Utica Pizza Company to your doorstep with It's a Utica Thing. All right, we're back here Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora live on location here with West Genesee Wildcats boys varsity basketball team. Wake Up Call is live Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. on wakeupcalldt.com. And I'm very happy to be here with these guys. We will re-air this broadcast as well, so you have the opportunity to hear it for Luke Sutherland, Will Amica, myself, Dan Satora, head coach Fred Kent, as well as Drew Kiefer and Liam Berry. Happy to have the guys here, and we appreciate you being here in support of them as well. This part of the show is something that I instituted years ago, and it's called Rapid Fire. And what that means is I'm going to throw a bunch of questions out there, they're going to have nothing, little to nothing to do with the sports world, and you're going to have to give me the first thought that comes to your mind. You will all get the same questions, but the order will be different as far as who I'm going to first. Liam, I'm going to start with you on this one. What is one word, one word your teammates would use to describe you? Shooter. Okay. <laughs> will. One word your teammates would use to describe you. That's not one word. They, they can't guard me. That's not one word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> unguardable, unguardable. Unguardable, okay. Luke, what is one word your teammates would use to describe you? Wild. <laughs> Wild, okay. <laughs> what about you, Drew? Uh, quiet. Quiet. Okay. Are you are you quiet on the court or just quiet in general? I think a little bit of both. A little bit of both. <laughs> Sometimes less quiet than others. What what gets you to speak up on the court? Is there anything that can happen to make it happen? Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably coach talking or talking to one of the teammates. All right, fair enough. Coach, one word that the team would use to describe you. Fit. Oh my lord. Okay. All right. Fit is the word. Well, I'm starting with you on this one. Give me one situation in your life where you were grounded and why you were grounded. <laughs> I wasn't grounded. I wasn't grounded. <laughs> so I'm good. You've never been grounded? <laughs> nah, I'm good. All right. Okay. Liam, give me one time you were grounded and for what? Kind of hard to think of. Uh, talking back to my mom. Can't do that. Okay. How long were you grounded for for that? A while. A while. Okay. Drew, what about you? One time you were grounded for what? Uh, not listening to my parents. Not listening to your parents. Luke, what about you? I came up too late for my PlayStation. <laughs> you came up too late for your PlayStation? Yeah. Who were you? Who were, were you facing somebody on the team? Uh, no. What were you playing? I was playing 2K by myself. 2K by yourself. Did you win? Yeah. Okay. 
So at least you won, so it was worth being grounded, I guess. Absolutely. Okay, fair enough. Next one, I'm going to start with Drew on this one. Favorite basketball player to watch? Ever. Favorite basketball player to watch? Ever. Ever. So you can go into the archives for this one, or you can talk about somebody playing now. John Stockton. Okay, I respect that. I like that. Why John Stockton? Uh, he likes basketball. I like basketball. I see a lot of simula similarities in both of our games. Okay, All right, fair enough. Luke, I'm going to ask you about that. Favorite basketball player to watch? LeBron. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, LeBron. Okay, what about you, Will? Um, Trayvon Duvall. <laughs> Trayvon Duvall, really? Yeah. How come? I, don't know, I just like everything he does. Now, he got offered by Syracuse, but he committed elsewhere. Yeah. So, is that sad for you that you're not going to see him here in Central New York? Yeah. I wanted him to come to Syracuse bad, but he didn't. Have you ever spoken to him? Nah. No? Would you like to? Is that somebody you like to pick their brain a little bit? Uh, yeah. You would? Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Hopefully you'll get an opportunity for that. Liam, Thanks. favorite basketball player to watch? I don't watch too much basketball, so <laughs> my player on 2K. Hey. Your player on 2K? Yeah. All right. Fair enough. I want to keep in the same line. Favorite, or let me, let me ask you this. Best Syracuse basketball player ever, in your opinion? Liam. Cooney. Trevor Cooney? Yeah. All right. What do you got, Luke? <laughs> John Kelly. <laughs> what about you, uh? Billy Owens? Billy Edelin. Billy Edelin, okay. Yeah. All right, Billy Edelin, what do you got, Drew? Uh, Tyler Ennis. Tyler Ennis. All right, Coach, what do you have for that? Lawrence Moten. All right, okay, Poetry and Moten, he was here with me a couple months ago doing a show. Favorite basketball player for you to watch? Uh, he hasn't played yet this year, but Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard, Kawhi Kawhi. Uh, he's a defensive first type of player, and he's gotten better every year. He's that dark horse when it comes to the MVP. Do you think he would ever be deserving of that? Absolutely. He plays uh, both ends, as far as offense and defense, and uh, he can dominate a game on either end, too. Is he one of the only players in the NBA that plays defense? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's true. But maybe Draymond Green and a couple other guys. That's about it. Coach, what about you? One time that you were grounded, and for what? The last time I was grounded, because there was more than one, it was when I crashed my dad's 57 Chevy. Do, doing what? Can you describe it? Yeah, and this is honest. It was a confirmation class. My friend forgot his paper, so I was chasing his sister in the back roads, and uh, I didn't have power steering, and I went right in a cornfield and never, never went off the gas and damaged everything. Now, my Uncle Joe just got a 57 Chevy. He's working on it right now. That was the car he always wanted from like 12 years old, and now he's in his early 70s, finally got it. So I, I think it's fair to say that you can't come down to St. Augustine to drive that. <laughs> no, you want to keep me far, as far away from that vehicle as possible. All right, fair enough. Next question, I'm going with you on this one, Will. Three people, could be anybody, three people that you'd like to meet in your life. Um... I want to go with Jilly Aeneas, um, LeBron James, and Kyrie Irving. All right, fair enough. How about you, Drew? Uh, uh, like, uh, Kevin Durant, uh, uh, I can't think of his name. Uh, probably LeBron James and then uh, Xander Bogarts. Okay. Give me, give me the third one. Why, why is Xander Bogarts? Uh, he's my favorite player on the Red Sox. Favorite uh, player on the Red Sox. Yeah. Okay, so a break away from basketball. I like it. Luke, what about you? Three people that you'd like to meet. LeBron. <laughs> LeBron James. Yeah. Giannis Antetokounmpo. And Beyonce. All right. Are you the first one that said a female? Why Beyonce? She's the best. She's the best. Okay, fair enough. Liam, what about you? 
Three people you'd like to meet. Uh, Derek Jeter, Rocky Balboa, and Jennifer Lopez. All right, so you took some, you took some different ones. Nobody in basketball. Why Jeter, Balboa, and Jennifer Lopez? Jennifer Lopez is kind of obvious. Uh, okay. Derek Jeter, I like how he played. Uh, okay. Rocky Balboa is just a legend. He's just a legend. All right, fair enough. Coach, three people that you'd like to meet. Uh, let's see here. Brad Stevens, uh, Greg Popovich, and John Gordon. Okay, so I'm going to go with, I want to ask a little bit more on Brad Stevens. I had the opportunity in NBA Summer League in Orlando to be around him when he took the job with the Celtics. When he was with Butler, I mean, this, he was one of the youngest coaches doing something in a conference for a team that nobody was supposed to be able to do. He got reunited with Gordon Hayward, the unfortunate injury, but there's a future to that. What is so special about Brad Stevens? Because... I mean, he's obviously somebody I respect as well. Uh, I, just, I think he's super intelligent. I think he's a genius. Um, I respect how, how well he communicates with his players, and uh, he does it always in a positive way. So I, I just I think he's a great role model for all coaches. Drew, your favorite class in school? Uh, does Jim count as a class? <laughs> Jim, yes. Jim. What is your least favorite class? Math. All right. Math. Favorite gym, least favorite math. Liam, what about you? Uh, I don't go to class enough to have a favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> so you got no answer for me? Yeah. Okay. What about, what about you, Will? Um, my favorite class? I say math. What about least favorite? Um, <laughs> probably, but uh, I don't know. Science, I mean, science is fun. Like, my class is fun, but I just don't like science. Okay. I'd like to point out our assistant Our assistant coach is his science, co uh, science teacher, too. I'd like to point that out. It's fun. Like, science is my, like, it's fun. It's my most fun class. I just don't like it. I don't like science. I don't like it. All right. What? What? Why not science? What don't you like about science? Um, I just don't get it. I don't get science. I don't know why. I just don't get it. I don't know why. Fair enough, Luke. What about you? Favorite class or least favorite? Social studies is my favorite, <laughs> and math is my least favorite. All right. Fair enough. Coach, in school for you, what was your favorite class, and what's your least favorite? I, I hate to agree with Will, but uh, I love math, and I still haven't figured out science. <laughs> Have you spoken to your staff about that? <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> uh, not too often, because our, our assistant coach has, has a little temper. Okay. Coach, I'm going to stay with you on this one. Give me three things that are on your bucket list. Uh, I, I picked up golf recently, so I would like to to play at a PGA course and shoot below 100. Um, another thing would be I'd like to see Manu Ginobili play before he retires, which is soon. So I, I hope that get that knocked off. And uh, coaching in Glens Falls would be be the third thing. Okay, coaching at Glens Falls. Bring me into. Yeah, bring me into, have you had dreams about that before? Uh, I've been there before as an assistant, uh, just never as a head coach, and uh, I'd like to go back. Do you envision that? Do you, ever, do you ever try to go there when you have some time? I mean, do you think about that? I know it's every game is important and it's step by step, but is that a thought that's kind of always there for you somewhere? It's always in the back of my mind. I honestly... You know, last year we were very successful, and I always had the dream of winning that title, whether it be a league or a sectional title, and getting our families and our players back in the gym when everybody else is gone, and getting the ladder out, and letting each player cut a piece of that net with we are the champions in the background, and having that moment. That's I think about that all the time. You know, in the back. But right now, it's about playing better defensively. All right, fair enough. Liam, what do you have for me? Three things on your bucket list. 
uh, skydiving. Okay. Uh, go to every, every MLB stadium. Okay. And make it past semis and playoffs. All right, fair enough. What about you, Drew? Three things on your bucket list. Uh, go to an NBA Finals Game 7. Okay. Uh, travel to Italy and go deep sea fishing. All right, so what do you got for me, Will? Um, I want to play Division One basketball. I want to meet Rihanna. And I want to... Uh, <laughs> I want to... And have Rihanna teach you about science? Yes. <laughs> I want Rihanna to teach you science. <laughs> what is that now? I want to... Uh, yeah, I want to go to Game 7. Uh, finals Game 7. Is is there anybody that can take Golden State to Game 7 this year? Boston Celtics. Boston Celtics. Boston Celtics, yeah. yeah. Kyrie. Kyrie's crazy. Alright, fair enough. What about you, Luke? What are, what are three things on your bucket list? Play Division One basketball. Win a sectional championship. And meet LeBron James. All right, fair enough. LeBron is all over this show today. One song on repeat, Drew. You can only play one song and one song only for the next year. What song would it be? Next year. You can't play anything else. You turn the radio on, and that's the song on every channel. That's a hard question. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, you probably no church in the wild. That's a good song. No church in the wild. Okay, I like that. I respect that. By you, Liam. One song. Uh, Born in the USA, Bruce Springsteen. Born in the USA. What about you, Luke? What do you got? Um, no time. PNB rock. <laughs> All right. No time. What about you, Will? Um, no comparison. A boogie. All right. Fair enough. What about you, Coach? One song on repeat, and it can't be the Spice Girls. You know, it, it probably would have been the Spice Girls. It'd be something my daughters chose on their iPad. I don't really have much control over that, but I'd say Humble, Tim McGraw. All right, fair enough. i got a couple more for you guys before I flip the script. One thing that you would change about the world, Coach? This is a serious question. Uh, equality for everyone. Fair enough. Will, one thing you would change about the world? Um, I end hunger. I end hunger. All right, so equality and hunger. What do you got, Luke? One thing you would change? Violence. All right, violence. Get rid of that. What about you, Liam? One thing that you would change about the world? Division. Division? Why are you doing? Uh, no poverty. No poverty. All right, fair enough. Your final question for me, Rapid Fire Wise, is how would you describe what a wildcat is William you first? Something you fear. Something you fear. What about you, Luke? Like, like a really hyped up cat. <laughs> a really, a really hyped up cat. All right, a cat on Mountain Dew. What are you? What about you, Will? What do you got? I like what Liam said. I like what Liam said. Something you fear. All right, something you fear. What about you too? A scary cat. What do you say? A scary cat. Scary cat. All right, what about you, coach? What's a wild cat? It's a hyped up cat. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. That is rapid fire. You guys are off the hot seat. We're going to take a couple minutes break. You can come up with questions for me. Make them good. Make them interesting. And some of you are in the room that asked me some questions. This guy over here. I think, I, I think the question was... If you had one parachute for your mother and your father, who would you choose? And my parents would tell you who I would choose, but no, I, I, I love them both. And to answer it again, even though I know I don't have to, but whatever, it's fine. I, I said that I would give the parachute to my mom because, you know, I, I, I mean, I have really good parents, but I said I hope that when she jumped out of the plane, she let my dad hold on to her. But I'd have to, I mean, if you have to choose, you gotta, you got to take care of mom. I mean, you know that. So we'll take a step aside here. We'll be back in just a few minutes. And when we come back, I'm on the hot seat, and I have no idea what you guys are going to ask me. But they will probably be just as good, if not worse, than that question. We'll be back in a couple minutes. Thanks for being here. This is a wake-up call. Fast break. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is located on 3680 Milton Avenue in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. 
Folks, some sports bars aren't family friendly. Some family friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York is proud to be both. It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315 315- 487-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant. Hi, this is Kira from Looking Glass Events, where we're always giving you a reason to celebrate. Whether you have a small business, large business, personal event, or a wedding, we are available to plan and coordinate your dream event to life. Every detail, every step, Looking Glass Events is working with you all the way. Call us at 315 315- 702-4653. That's 315-702-4653. Or contact us through our website, lgweddingsandevents.com. Looking Glass Events, giving you a reason to celebrate. We're back here with Wake Up Call with Dan Tour Tour, live on location at the Wildcat Sports Club. We are here once a month doing a live show. This time around, very happy to have the gentlemen of the West Tennessee Wildcats boys varsity team and their head coach. So we have Fred Kent here with me as well as Drew Kiefer, Liam Berry, Luke Sutherland, and Will Amika. This is the part of the show where I don't know uh, any uh, interviewers or broadcasters that do this, but they allow themselves to flip the other way around. You guys get to ask questions and you'll get continue to be asked questions as you go throughout your career. I'm going to I'm going to allow you to flip it and ask me questions. I'm sure that you had some training by some of the guys on the football and basketball team and I'm going to give Drew the first question. What do you got for me? So uh, I saw you with a Jaguar sweatshirt on when you walked in. Yes. So why the Jaguars? Why the Jaguars? Uh, I, I've been a fan since 1995, since their institution. Fred Taylor's my favorite running back. I know he's since retired, but he's working with the team. So why Jacksonville? I wanted to have a team that had no bandwagon, so they were created later. And to see this team get to where they are right now and to be winning is something good to see because I know they've worked very hard to do it. And I'm a huge Tom Coughlin fan, so that helps too. Liam, what's your question for me? As a senior who's going off to college next year, I've, I've got like all the information about the school, but is college where you settle down with a girl or do you play the field in college? Do you settle down in college or do you play the field? <laughs> well, I, I would have appreciated to find a good one in the beginning, but I found, I found uh, some women that, that if anybody knows about Batman, Arkham Asylum would be a good place for these ladies. But uh, I, uh, I played the field. I, I, it took until after I got out of college to realize how many girls I had dated in college. But uh, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't for want to date a bunch of people. It was trying to find the right person. And uh, I met her actually after college. But I have some really funny and some really good stories. So I would say if you find a good one, hold on to it because it's hard to find in this world. And if you find a crazy one, well, I guess you're playing the field. Go ahead, Luke. What do you got for me? What's your spirit animal? My spirit animal. Oh boy. I'm not going to say the jaguar because that'd be, that'd be too easy. My spirit animal, I would say the lion because of uh, Daniel and the lion's den in the Bible. So I believe in God. I have a strong faith. I'd have to say the lion. And obviously they know how to take care of being out in the wild, which, which I'm good with. What do you think? What's, what's yours, Will? What do you got? A spirit animal? No, no, your question is No, you know what? At this point, go ahead. What's your spirit animal? I don't even know. Oh, probably. I like. Nah, I like a cheetah. Cause they're fast. I like cheetahs. All right, fair enough. What's your What's your question for me? Um, what was your worst experience with your girlfriend? Worst with any girlfriend? Oh goodness me. My worst experience. Oh man. I would say 
It's got to be PG. Uh, I would say... <laughs> I would say probably when I dated a girl from uh, North Carolina and she invited me to visit her family and, and a lot of North Carolinians are very sweet people and this, this girl proved to me that not all southern women have southern hospitality so I, I went down to visit her family, I was by myself and she told me that she wanted to play airsoft and I didn't know what that was and I found out that, you know, it was, it was, you know, shooting BBs. So everybody in the family gets a gun. Her dad got a gun. Her mom got a gun. Normally her grandparents have them and people in the community. She told me to go outside and help her shoot her parents. And I wasn't for that. So I remember telling her I didn't want to do it. And I was like, I'm good. I'll watch while you guys go outside. And she gave me that McFly moment. And, and Coach, you know, Marty McFly and Back to the Future and all that. So she put her arms around me and she said, I can understand if you're not a real man. So, so I strapped up and went outside with my, uh, my gun and uh, I didn't want to shoot anybody. I'm not, I'm not a hunter. It's not, it's not what I like to do. So I, I thought the game was going to be fun and peaceful and, and whatever. I didn't think it was going to be that crazy. Her dad saw me out in the forest and I just saw like two shots go real quick right by me like a sniper. And I was like, this man's serious. So I kind of just unloaded and I ran. But being the only person there and not having my family as backup, I got behind their uh, jungle gym and I unloaded all my bullets. And I said, I was like, I'm out. I got to go reload. So then I went and I loaded the BBs one by one so that I didn't have to go back out there. She got really mad at me. That night, she said to me that we had to break up because... If I couldn't take a BB gun uh, bullet, what would I do if she ever got shot with a real bullet? My question to her was, why would someone be shooting at you? And when we broke up, I said, out of respect for the shooter, I'd step aside, is what I said. <laughs> so, so that was probably the craziest thing, is going back to my roommates and saying that I had to shoot her parents, and she wanted me to shoot her, her uh, Mimi and Pa, or, or however she calls them. And thankfully, her grandparents did not play the game. Coach, what do you have for me? Uh, if you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? If I could change one thing about myself, what would it be? <laughs> well, if I was taller, I probably would have been playing some more basketball. So that would have been nice. But I'd like to be a little bit taller. My dad's six foot. My mom's 4'11". So I always thank my mom for putting me where I'm at. But I love my mom. And uh, one other thing I would change, I would say that... I would not let, I always say don't let the world get to you, you get to the world. And, you know, I'm not a perfect person, and in the world we live in today, I feel like, you know, sometimes the world gets to all of us, and I'd, uh, moving forward, would, would like that to be less, because, you know, this world can be a great place, and it can also be a tough place, and I, I think you gotta, you gotta be strong in the world we live in today. What do you got for me, Drew? Uh, well, uh... Back in the day, or like whenever it was, but would you have considered yourself a ladies' man? Would I have considered myself a ladies' man? I, I would say that my friends would say yes. I, I'm not that, I'm a humble guy, but my friends always told me that I dated around a lot, and I, like I said, I didn't really think about it, but I mean, I, I had fun, but I'm a respectful man. I, I'm, a, I'm a hopeless romantic, so I was good to the ladies. Go ahead, Liam. What do you got? What's your favorite sport? Favorite sport? Uh, bas I would have to say basketball first, football second. So, but it's it's tough. It's a very very close. But I grew up playing basketball. Age three, I think they handed me a basketball. What do you got for me, Luke? One celebrity you'd marry. One celebrity I would marry. I, I think I'm going to have to go off of something Liam said earlier. I think it would have to be Jennifer Lopez. Because I have some Hispanic blood and, you know, she can dance. She doesn't really age. So I guess I would say Jennifer Lopez. What do you got for me, Will? Um, what's the worst injury you got playing basketball? The worst injury I got playing basketball? I, I was never badly injured, which is a good thing. But I sprained my, there was a time where I sprained both of my ankles. So to sprain one ankle, you know, you can kind of live with it. But to sprain them both at the same time was... That was a pain, so I'd probably say that was that was a tough one. What do you got for me, Coach? Uh, what's the oldest you can be to, to still go trick-or-treating? 
The oldest you can be to still go trick or treating. Socially acceptable. I would say as long as you have a friend that will let you borrow their child, you can be as old as you want to be. So, you know, when Uncle Dan comes over and says, I'll take the kids out for Halloween, that's because I'm, I'm trying to get a, a Reese's and a Twix and have a good time. Liam, what do you got for me? Have you ever been pulled over? Yes, I have. For what? I've been pulled over for speeding. How fast? I don't remember. That's not a lie, I really don't. I, I got pulled over for one of my lights being out in Florida, and I said to the cop, I was like, oh, I'm just coming back from covering a game, I'm a sportscaster. And he was like, oh, you know, who do you work for, what are you doing? And I ended up talking with the cop, and he's like, well, next time, if your light is, you're having some trouble with your light, just give it a good tap. He's like, there might be something wrong in there. And he let me go, because my light was out, and he was supposed to give me a ticket. So I went home, and I told my roommate, Rudy, and he goes, only you could stop somebody, talk about sports, and get out of a ticket. So I have gotten out of a ticket before, and I didn't have to cry, which is nice. Will, what do you got for me? Um, what, what was your favorite sport growing up? Favorite one growing up? It was, it was basketball and football, but more, a little bit more basketball. What, what do you got for me, Luke? What was the last lie you told and to who? Oh, my Lord. What was the last lie I told and to who? He said he was a ladies' man. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a lie. Uh, I would say, <laughs> well, my last, I, you know, I really, I try not to lie. I'm trying to think back to a lie that I told. What the heck? What was the lie that I told recently? I, I think, <laughs> I can't even remember. When I want to be left alone because I'm always running around owning my own company and, and broadcasting and whatnot. So when I tell somebody I'm not available, I guess, because I just want to have an hour to myself. So I guess that that would be the last lie that I told. What do you got for me? Well, I heard you say you got one. Uh, uh, I forgot it. I like it. You got to think about it. All right, Coach, what do you got? Once, once Jim Beheim decides he doesn't want to coach anymore, who would you like to see replace him? Adrian Autry. What do you got for me, William? Uh, All right, go ahead, Drew. What do you got? Uh, what was your uh, party lifestyle like in college? <laughs> my, my party lifestyle like in college. I I've never been drunk, so I'm not I'm not that. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Normally you don't get a clap for that, but I I've never been drunk. I've never wanted to. So my party lifestyle. I just kind of went out and I was always the guy that liked to mess around and tell jokes and stuff, ad lib, make people laugh. So. The party lifestyle is kind of wherever my friends were going. We hung out, but I didn't need alcohol to have a good time. So, what do you got for me, Liam? What's your opinion on man Uggs? My opinion on what? Man Uggs. Man Uggs. Man Uggs. Man Uggs. Yeah, the shoes. Oh, you mean the thing that Tom Brady got his team? Oh, yeah. I think that if I got male Uggs from my quarterback, we must have lost the championship game or we must be the Cleveland Browns, because male Uggs should never have been, I, I remember, you know what male Uggs are, and this is my issue with it. When, when I was a little kid, what do, you, what do you have, you got Uggs on now? Oh, yeah. oh my um, goodness. It's a team thing. All right. Well, what male Uggs, what, what Uggs used to be is when I used to take off, my dad would let me wear his, his snowshoes out to help him shovel, and when I would take the shoe off, the inside insulation of the shoe would come out. That's what a male Ugg is with fur. So I don't understand it. I can appreciate if you have them, but if I was a quarterback, my team wouldn't be getting any. What do you got for me, Fred? What do you got for me, Coach? Uh, I didn't think it was my turn. Isn't it his turn? Oh, no, I'm going to you now. Oh, no. Uh, let's see here. If you could meet one person, who would it be? If I could meet one person, who would it be? Oh, boy. That's a tough one. I know. Well, yesterday I met Bob Costas, and we got to talk because he came in for Mike Tirico getting honored. So I spent 20 minutes with Bob Costas. If I didn't meet him yesterday, he would definitely be one. Uh, I would say one person that I love to meet, and, and I actually do know this, there are three people that wore the number 44 that were some of the greatest football players in the history of mankind. And they were Ernie Davis, Jim Brown, and Floyd Little. Floyd is a good friend. 
Jim Brown, I got to interview him two years ago. So I look forward to the day, if I'm lucky enough to be in heaven, that I get to talk to Ernie Davis. Because Ernie Davis is the one person that I can think that any time that question comes up, it takes, you know, it took a little bit for me to, to think here, but that's, that's a guy that I'd really love to pick his brain, and not just for what he did on the field, but the era in which he did it in. And the fact that Ben Schwartzwalder took a chance on him when it wasn't socially acceptable to do so. Luke, what do you got for me? Who's your favorite basketball player of all time? Favorite basketball player of all time? I would say Michael Jordan or Magic Johnson. I think one of the first games I ever watched was Magic going down the lane and he looked like he was going up for the layup and then the ball disappeared and he had swung it around his back. I mean, it's the way that he played the game was insane. So, I mean, Ma Michael Jordan's an easy one, but Magic Johnson, he was every bit of his name for sure. What do you got for me, Will? What was the sports game you broadcasted? The sports passes. The one game? The first game that like, you sports broadcasted. Yeah, that was in, uh, in college. I started a show called MU Courtside at Marywood University, which is now 14 years old. So the first broadcast I ever did was my own, and the creation of the show... The uh, university ended up keeping it, and they use it to help students learn about media arts and, and all that right now. So that was my first. Drew, what do you got? I'll let you guys go with a couple more apiece. What do you got, Drew? If, uh, you played 2K. What would you make your my player like? If I played 2K, what my? Well, what would your be like? Your best abilities? How would I do that? My best abilities: uh, three-point shooting, dunking, and speed. I'd say that. What do you got, Liam? Um, if you were to have more hair, what would you have? A mullet, an afro, or braids? A mullet, an afro, or braids? I feel like I'd rock the afro. Yeah. I don't know why. I just feel like I would do it. So I would go, I guess I would go that way. What do you got for me, Luke? Favorite quote. Favorite quotes. That's, that's tough. Favorite quote. I would say, I try to make them up. I try to, you know, be, send inspirational stuff out because there's so much negative stuff. So I try to make stuff up on the daily, but one that uh, some people might say is cliche, but I think the world needs to hear it, is do unto others as you would have done unto you. So I, I think it's a daily thing for me that if somebody treats me with a level of disrespect or is negative, that I have a choice of matching that with hate or being a better person. It is very hard to be the better person but you can sleep at night when you are. So I would say treat others with respect even if they don't have the respect of, of giving that back to you. What do you got for me, Will? Um, your favorite video game? Madden. Madden. What do you got for me, Coach? What's your greatest fear? Greatest fear? That I would leave this world with it being... That I would leave this world without effectively changing it for the better. So I, if whenever God takes me, it's it's I gotta have done something good with the world. What do you have for me, Liam? How'd you get into the show? How'd I get into doing the show? Uh, that's I give credit. I actually talked about it this morning. Stuart Scott. I said he was he was the best mentor I never met. So at 10 years old, I, I used to turn on in order to sleep at night. Uh, I would turn on ESPN, and I just watched Rich Eisen and Stuart Scott all the time. And Stuart Scott. He let me know that being different and being original and saying phrases and being animated, that it was okay. And, you know, in the world that, that I live in, you know, a, a lot of people think that they're broadcasters. A lot of people think that they, they know what it's about because of social media and whatnot. But there's so many nuances and, and, and special, intricate things that go into it. And being original in the world is something really cool to wake up in the morning and do every day. And Stuart Scott, every time I thought to myself, well, what if it's not cool for me to do it this way? I would turn on the show at night or in the morning, and he would do something crazy, and I just loved it. So I would say Stuart Scott, and, and he's another guy I'd like to interview if I got the chance. Luke, what do you got? Can you guard Willamica? Can I guard Willamica? I'm going to say no. But, but, if, if Will ever wanted to play, we could play. 
I'm not saying I could guard them, but I'm saying that I can have some fun out there. What do you got for me, Will? You think you can guard Lucas Sutherland? <laughs> but I think I can guard. Well, that depends. You come out to the three point line? I go inside. You will? Yeah. Okay. You would? Because no, I'm, I'm shooting trees. I mean, that's what I'm doing. So you're playing inside. Are you? Will you shoot outside or no? You got a jump shot? Oh yeah. You got something to offer? Okay. Well, it would be fun. It would be interesting. Drew, what do you got for me? Uh, with the season just starting, who's your prediction to win the NCAA tournament this year? Uh, with the season starting, who's my prediction to win the NCAA tournament? I picked, and we did our preseason poll for the ACC, and out of the 15 schools, Duke was was number one. It, it is, it's insane that Duke has the level of talent they had and that Bagley reclassified to be in this year. Uh, you, normally when you have a bunch of freshmen, there's question marks. But Duke legitimately looks like the team that should be there at the end of it all. And, you know, whether you love them or hate them, you got to respect them. What do you have for me, Coach? Uh, what's your first impression of our players? First impression of the players. They have some comedy. Uh, they, seem, they seem to be, you know, respectable kids. They seem to have some fun. And, and I like the fact that there is a, a team aspect. Same thing with the football team. Sitting, sitting with you guys and getting to know you in this atmosphere, it lets me see kind of what you're made up of and if you guys care about each other and, and what your, what your you know, narrative is like back and forth. So uh, I, it's, it's good to be around you guys because it's one thing to watch you and see if you win or lose. It's another thing to know your favorite color or what makes you tick or you know, why you're playing basketball. So I appreciate you being here. Liam, what do you got for me? Xbox or PlayStation? Xbox. 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 I used to have a PlayStation, but I have an Xbox now, so I have to say Xbox. All right, Drew, what do you got? Uh, how many of our games are you going to come to this year? As many as you invite me to that is I not in... All of them. All of them? All of them. As long as you don't conflict with anything I've promised already, I will be out there to see you guys play. Clear I promise your, you I will be there. Clear out your schedule. we got a lot. All right. Well, I promise you I will come out and see you play this season. What do you got for me, Luke? <laughs> How many girlfriends have you had in your life? Too many to count. Go ahead, Will. Favorite shoe? Favorite shoe? I like the ones I got on right now. So I, I call them, they look like the Flash. So I like them, they're red and yellow. So I can, I can roll with these. I like these. These are, these are probably some of the favorites I've ever had. Coach, your final question for me in Rapid Fire. What's the last song you sang out loud? Oh, my God. The last song I sang out loud. Uh, I can't even think right now. Can you sing some for us too? I was gonna have to I'm not gonna sing for you tonight. This is the this is you know this is the first meeting. You gotta you gotta let that be the third or fourth time. It's a third date. So yeah, it's, that's a third date question. So I would say what's the, what's the last song I, I sang something today? What the heck did I sing today? Today, you I did. I, mean, I sing every day. Uh, it's peaceful, coach. You should try it. So, I don't know. I guess I would maybe something by Journey. I, I, I can't remember right now. I really can't. Stop believing. No, not don't stop believing. I, I just maybe maybe Separate ways. Separate ways, worlds apart. That's a good song. So I can't remember what it what it was this morning, but I'll figure it out. All right, well, what's your final question? Um. I don't even know. Can we go to Luke first? Yeah, we'll go. Ahead. All right. No? All right. Go ahead, Drew. What do you got? Last one. Uh, what was the first day you ever went on with a girl? Everything with you has been about women. Not, not. <laughs> what, is, what, is, what is the first date I ever went on? Yeah. Well, if you count, if you count my first kiss, I was five. <laughs> and we were playing house. And there's this girl down the street that came over to my grandmother's house, and my cousin Christina was there. And this girl, Lindsay, she, she said that, like, I was supposed to be her husband in this, in this house plan thing. My grandfather was sitting in a lawn chair watching us, just making sure everybody behaves and whatnot. She pushed me down on the ground and then, and then kissed me. She pushed me down and got right down on the ground and kissed me, and my grandfather screamed at me for kissing her, so I got in trouble. That was my first kiss, though. Ladies, man. I guess so. What do you got What do you got for me, Liam? Your final question. When's it, 
acceptable to start playing Christmas music? When is it acceptable to start playing Christmas music? If you listen to the radio, it's Halloween, but I would say the acceptable time to play Christmas music is after Thanksgiving. Black Friday. Black, yeah, Black Friday, that's fine. All right, Luke, what's your final? If you were invisible, there's one place you'd go. If I was not invisible, what's one place I would go? <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to make this a little bit political, but if I was invisible, I would go to North Korea and I'd get rid of, of that tiny man who has, uh, has a little bit of an issue with everybody else in the world. So if I was invisible, he would probably disappear. All right, well, what's your final question? If you had one superpower, what would it be? Flight or, or uh, I would either be able to fly or teleport. That would be one of mine. So that, one of those two. Well, for that, Lee, to have Liam Barry here as well as Drew Kiefer, Coach Fred Kent, as well as Will Amica, Luke Sutherland, myself, Dan Tortora. It has been an absolute pleasure to have you guys here. This is Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Make sure you take a card because we will be re-airing the show. Thank you so much for being here. and We look forward to having the team back. And we look forward to you guys winning a bunch of games this year. So go out there and do what you got to do. And thank you for being here tonight. This is a wake up call fast break. Utica Pizza Company spells family. Your family. My family their family. The recipes that they have shared with each other throughout the years and have now been so gracious to share them with us. I can sit here and talk with you about all the great things that are on the menu. We'd be here forever. So let me say this. Utica Pizza Company is second to none. And now you can bring it home with you and you can dine in in the restaurant. UticaPizzaCompany.com will give you all the information that you need. And let me say, these Utica Greens, they're the best. Utica Pizza Company, Call them and place your order at 315-214-3060. That's 315-214-3060. Families break bread at Utica Pizza Company. Gear up with the real deal at Dreisig Apparel. Creating what people are going to see and learn about you before they even meet you. Gear up for what you need for your team, business, or event. To look professional, look good, and feel good, outfit yourself at DreisigApparel.com. That's D-R-E-I-S-S-I-G Apparel.com. The only place to gear up with the real deal. The Pennant Trophy Center on 111 East Willow Street in Syracuse, New York, has been making memories for Central New York for over 60 years. It has the trophies for your teams, and when you walk in there, it's so much more than just that. When you walk into the Pennant Trophy Center, you are immersed in the reality that anything can be customized, anything can be engraved, whether it's for your anniversary, your wedding, your bar mitzvah, your birthday party, whatever you want to do with that memory, that watch from grandpa, or that bracelet from mom, or that wedding ring that's been passed down through your family. If you want to get something engraved with a memory to last a lifetime, the Penn and Trophy Center, 111 East Willow Street in Syracuse, New York, where memories are made and where memories last a lifetime. What's the universal language of a fan? Clapping your hands. With Fan Hands, the ultimate sports fan accessory, find your team color, slip them on, and start cheering on your favorite team with 11 different colors always in stock on FanHands.com, where you'll find the ultimate sports fan accessory. Real fans wear Fan Hands. The name Lees and Staggerwald is synonymous with Central New York with over 80 years of service to the community. Lees and Staggerwald downtown is your butcher, grocery, pub, and deli located on 117 East Fayette Street in Syracuse, New York. Minutes from the Carrier Dome in your perfect pre-gaming headquarters with Rob Drummond and myself, Dan Tortora, two hours before home games. Lees and Staggerwald downtown where you can dine in, take out, pre-game up on the hill with their meats or pre-game 
inside their walls. Lee's and Staggerwald downtown, a unique experience for every single fan and every member of the community with over eight decades of service. They're open Monday from 10.30 a.m. to 3 p.m., Tuesday through Thursday from 10.30 a.m. to 8 p.m., Friday 10.30 a.m. to 9 p.m., Saturday noon to 9 p.m., and closed on Sunday on 117 East Fayette Street in Syracuse, New York. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. Hope you had fun listening in to the broadcast of the West Genesee Wildcats boys varsity basketball team. I'm very excited about, uh, you, you know, getting to know this team over time. They've really been, uh, they were a ton of fun at the show. And, uh, you know, when I'm saying, when I say I'm excited to get to know the team and, you know, to be around them, it's really just a credit to the school and it's a, it's a credit to the coaching staff and, and really, you know, the players because they were fun to be around. I mean, as you can hear us, we had a good time. We had some fun. We joked around and, and it really was, it really was something nice for us to do, you know, to, uh, to be able to talk with one another and get to know one another. And they've had a couple of their, uh, scrimmages, but their first game, like I said, is going to be on December 2nd, which is this coming Saturday at 1245 PM against Christian brothers Academy. And that will be at West Genesee high school. So, West Jenny is playing at home against CBA on December 2nd, this Saturday at 12.45 p.m. Eastern Time. So make sure you go out and see them and have a good time at the game. They're going to be playing a bunch of different teams. They play CBA, Proctor, CNS, Henniger, uh, slash Nottingham. They're also going to be playing Baldwinsville, Shenandoah, Liverpool, uh, Henniger again, I don't know why that said Hunt Nottingham with a slash at Corcoran, Fayetteville Manlius, and then they will run the gamut once again with all of those teams. And then they'll play Binghamton on February 13th, and that will round out their regular season of play. So very exciting for the guys to go out there and get some games under their belt and have some opportunities. I'm very excited about them going out and, and doing what they got to do and showing what they can because, I mean, this is – you know, it, it seems like a good group of kids, smart group of kids, a funny group of kids, and, you know, already getting recruited are Luke Sutherland, who is a part of the show, and Will Amica. Luke Sutherland plays for the AAU's New York Jayhawks, and a good friend of mine, Jay David, is connected with that program as well and helps that program to run, so kind of cool to have that connection, but with Will Amica, Luke Sutherland, Liam Barry, Drew Kiefer, head coach Fred Kent, I'm very, very uh, excited about going out and seeing the guys and, and getting to know the guys, getting them back out at the Wildcat Sports Pub on 3680 Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York, to meet you and hang out with you just a couple minutes from West Genesee High School. And I want to thank everybody that came out to the event because it really means the world to me, and I'm sure it means the world to the kids when you come out and spend time with them. And the amount of people that have come out to our events to see these kids has been remarkable. So, you know, whether it's West Genesee football or West Genesee basketball that we have done over at the Wildcat Sports Pub, you've come out in droves, you've dedicated your time. It doesn't matter if it's a Monday night, Wednesday night, whenever it is during the week, you've made it a point to come out and see us. And that goes such a long way and it means so much. And, and, I, and like I said, for the program, I'm sure it means a lot. And to the kids, it means a lot to me. It really, it goes a long way. So let me thank the community for what you do and and let you know that I appreciate you very much. I also appreciate you going out to the Wildcat, whether we're there or not, you know, to go out to the Wildcat any time of the week, any day of the week on 3680 Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York, in the Home Depot Plaza to go out and see just how great it is, how great the food is, the atmosphere, the games are. It's a family-friendly sports bar, which is very, very difficult to pull off. But somehow, some way, Danny and Heather Tome have done it. So thank you to them, and thank you to the entire family at the Wildcats Sports Pub. Thank you to West Genesee and the Wildcats. Thank you to the football program and the basketball program. And I look forward to having other programs and other players out, as well as head coaches. And I look forward, like I said, to having Fred Kent come out and see us again 
And a special thanks to Will Amica, who's always welcome, Luke Sutherland, Drew Kiefer, and Liam Barry, who are welcome as well, to come out and see us and be a part of the broadcast in the future. Great group of kids, and like I said, it seems like they have a lot of fun. And it's it's nice for me to be around that because, you know, any of us to be around that because we live in a world where we focus on the negative and then I'm hanging out with these young men and we're talking and you just start to focus on what really matters and you turn your focus to them and wanting them to be happy and them to to know that the world has good in it. So you start to think more positively about the world because you want them to think more positively about the world. So it's just a, it's a beautiful thing and it's a true honor. And so I want to give my special thanks to everybody that came out to the event and to everybody that just listened in. This will be rebroadcast as all the shows are on wakeupcalldt.podbean.com. That's wakeupcalldt, one word, no hyphens, dot podbean, P-O-D-B-E-A-N.com. You can get to that link and to the archive by going to wakeupcalldt.com and right under the live MixLR feed, it says download for free. You can listen to the shows by downloading the RSS feed, the downloadable app on Podbean that I just gave you, or by downloading it through the iTunes store. So there's plenty of ways to get involved with 790 shows and counting of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Up next in the morning menu, proudly presented by the Market Diner on 2100 Park Street in Syracuse, New York, in the regional market across from Destiny, USA, it is time to go on the prowl. Signature segment, speaking on the Jacksonville Jaguars, the 7-4 and four Jaguars. Now, the Jaguars are not used to winning seven games in a season, nor are they used to being in a position where they have a winning record, nor are they even more so in a position to have a winning record that is above 500 more than a game, you know, not like a, we're five and four. So, you know, if, if, you know, if we lose this week, then we're back to 500, you know, they have, they have built some momentum and they were on a four game winning streak before losing to the Arizona Cardinals 27 to 24. Now the Jaguars did not look pretty in this game against their old quarterback. The irony of having your old franchise quarterback who didn't turn out to be the franchise quarterback, Blaine Gabbert, playing up against you and against your current franchise quarterback who you drafted after you got rid of Blaine Gabbert in Blake Bortles. And then on the other side, Calais Campbell, your defensive end that's been so huge for you this season, was on the other side with Arizona a season before, and everything good that he did in Arizona made him desirable to you. And the Jacksonville Jaguars, that's the you in this conversation, pick him up. And then look at what he did against his old team in Arizona, his first crack at him. He, he was able to recover a fumble and return it into the end zone to give the Jacksonville Jaguars a fighting chance. This defense has been everything to the Jaguars. Absolutely everything to the Jaguars this season. It, they have done all that they can do to get the Jaguars to win. And in this game, Arizona just did enough. They did enough to get through. And Phil Dawson, who's 117 years old, God bless him, Phil Dawson, and, and I say that, you know, I, yeah, it comes across as a joke, but I say that with with gratitude, appreciation, uh, tribute, respect, because Phil Dawson was with the Cleveland Browns pretty much from the beginning when the Browns came back, and he was. I mean, he was he was the Browns kicker forever and a day, and he's just found a way to have longevity in the NFL and now with the Arizona Cardinals and he's not just having longevity in the NFL he's kicking long field goals so longevity twice fold I mean with one second left in this game he kicked a 57 yard field goal to win the game 27 to 24 you got to give big ups to him for that for closing it out doing things the right way the Jaguars turn the ball over three times usually that's not a good sign that's not typically a team that wins games uh, first down wise, they were close to one another. Arizona had 20. The Jacksonville Jaguars had nine, had uh, 19 in the game. Uh, total yardage wise, Arizona was allowed 344 cumulative for passing and running the ball, and then uh, the Jaguars only had 219. So as good as their defense did, you know, some give up 200 or 344 yards just to the quarterback. Jacksonville Jaguars in four quarters gave up 
344 total yards of offense to Arizona. But the issue is that their offense has been stagnant. And I don't really say, oh, these defenses are stopping the Jaguars offense. It's just Jacksonville's not getting going on offense. They're not pushing it. And it's no disrespect to the teams that play against them. I want to give credit to Arizona and credit to other teams that have stymied the offense. I just feel like Jacksonville doesn't get enough out of their offense. They're not, they don't make the right decisions. And I think that they, you know, they kind of bite their own foot more than anybody else does. And 219 yards. I mean, when you're, when your defense is only giving up 344 total, you know, you, you need to win that game and 219 yards and three turnovers is not going to get it done on offense. So that's a, that's a tough break for it in this one. Blake Bortles shocked the world. Averaged 10.3 yards per carry, six carries for 62 yards, led Leonard Fournette by almost 40 yards more than him on the ground, and had two rushing touchdowns in the game. No passing touchdowns through an interception in the game, but two rushing touchdowns. An issue with Jacksonville is that Jaden Mickens and Chris Ivory both fumbled the ball and lost it. So that's a huge issue for the Jaguars and Blake Bortles throwing an interception. You know, that happens. You know, you could, but you got to get a touchdown. You got to. You got to even out your your dance card there, so to speak. So if you throw a pick, you got to be able to get a touchdown on the other side of it. Fumbling the ball is not going to help you out, and and that obviously was an issue for the Jaguars. They did allow 100 yards on the ground to Arizona, 79 to Adrian Peterson. They shut down Larry Fitzgerald, only allowed him three catches for 12 yards, no touchdowns in the game. But Jerron Brown was left wide open. He had one catch the entire game, and it was the best catch of his life. Wide open. I shouldn't say the best catch of his life. Best catch of this game. Wide open, maybe the season. Jerron Brown down the field, one catch for 52 yards, reaches his hand, stretches his hands out as he crosses into the goal line and catches the ball because coverage was lax on Jerron Brown. So, you know, you take care of Larry Fitzgerald, but you got to be able to mark other guys. Uh, Ricky Seals Jones, who's done some good things in the last couple weeks in fantasy, he was a guy who benefited from the fact that they shut down Larry Fitzgerald. You got to look at it. The the usual suspects: J.J. Nelson, one catch for 14 yards; Fitz, three catches for 12 yards; Jermaine Gresham, their tight end that's come on as of late a little bit, two catches for 13 yards. Jacksonville secondary shut down all the names except for they forgot it, and they shut down Jerron Brown until that one play at the end of the game. And Ricky Seals-Jones, he was able to get four catches targeted six times, so he got some opportunities. Fitz was targeted eight times, only caught three of them, so less than 50% of the ones thrown his way. So Jacksonville took care of business, and like I said, against the usual suspects, they did a good job. But And they did a good job on Jerron Brown up until the last moment. You have to play all 60 minutes. I know that it's very hard to be perfect and it's easier said than done and that people will sit here and go, Dan, sitting in your chair, you can say whatever you want to say because, of course, you know, you don't have to go cover these people and you're absolutely right. I don't have to go cover these people. But the Jacksonville Jaguars had to and they did a phenomenal job throughout the majority of the game to take out the Greshams and the Fitzgeralds and the Nelsons of the world and the Browns of the world. But Jerron Brown... That one catch lacks coverage. All it takes is one play to change the game, and that was the play that did. So Jacksonville fought back, fought hard later on in this game, but they didn't do anything in the first half. They scored three points in a half an hour, and that's not going to help you out. They were down 13-3 to at the break. So as much as they scored 7-3 to over Arizona in the third, and they outscored them 14-11 to in the fourth, that wins the game. But you didn't take care of business in the first half. 21 points to 14 points in the second half, but down 13 to three in the first half. Just like I say about Syracuse basketball, they got to play both halves. Well, the Jacksonville Jaguars from the court to the field, the Jaguars had to play two halves and they tried to be a second half surging team. And just like I said about Syracuse, you can't rely on the second half to save you every time because sometimes no matter how, how well you play at the back end of the game, It's what you did at the front end or failed to do at the front end that could ultimately cost you the match. And that's what happened with the Jacksonville Jaguars in this one. They are 7-4. and They are 4-1 and in their last five games. They're going to be home for the better part of December. They're at home for for three of their last five games and three of them in a row. 
They play the Colts at home on December 3rd, this coming weekend on Sunday at 1. They play the Seahawks on December 10th at 1. And they play the, they play the Texans on December 17th at 1. And then they'll be on the road at the 49ers on Christmas Eve at 4.05 p.m. Eastern Time. And on New Year's Eve, they'll be at Tennessee, hoping, if you're a Jaguars fan, that Tennessee and Jacksonville are not tied at that time. Or that Jacksonville is behind Tennessee at that time. You would hope that tennis, if you're a Jaguars fan, you're hoping for Tennessee to lose a game and for Jacksonville to win a game so they could flip-flop again so that that final game between the Titans and the Jaguars could help out Jacksonville in a big way and help them shut the door for good as opposed to being a fighting chance to get in the playoffs or being that last-ditch effort. You never want your team to come down to the wire and have a last-ditch hope of getting in. It's better than nothing but you'd obviously like them to have some cushion. Now, Jacksonville was in third place in the playoffs going into Week 12, third place of the AFC. They were behind only Pittsburgh and New England, respectively. But that's because they were leading the AFC South. So out of the top four, they didn't have a better record than Pittsburgh, nor did they the Patriots, but they had a better record than Kansas City. So in the AFC South, East, West, and North, the best three records, Jacksonville was in the top three, at 7-3, and three, so they were third. Tennessee won over the Colts, and Jacksonville lost. With them winning, the Titans go to 8-4, and four, or pardon me, 8-3, and three, and the Jaguars, or pardon me, let me do this right. In winning, Tennessee went to 7-4, and four, and Jacksonville fell to 7-4. and four. And because of the tiebreaker between Tennessee and Jacksonville, where Tennessee went into Florida and defeated Jacksonville at Everbank Field in a game that I was on site for because of that head to head win, Tennessee has the division if it ended today. They're both seven and four, but Tennessee holds the tiebreaker, which means Jacksonville has to hope that Tennessee loses to go to seven and five, and Jacksonville wins to go to eight and four, so that they can overtake Tennessee to get in the top four, get a home game, as opposed to being a wild card team, because there's a big difference. You know, Jacksonville plays better on the road. So, I mean, I don't know at this point which is better, but you'd like to think a home game would be more helpful. Jacksonville's gotten on the better side of things at home. They started 0-2 at home. Since then have gone 2-0, and and they are 4-2 and on the road. So, I should say 5 and – let me do this. They're 2-2 two and two at home, which puts them with 5-2 and two left, and that's why, because – because on some outlets, they count the Ravens game as a home game because Jacksonville gives it up to play in London. It's not a home game, obviously. You're not even playing on the same continent. So I don't call it a home game. I call it a neutral site game. So the Jaguars are 5-2 and two away from home, 2-2 two and two at home. So some people think maybe it would bode them well to be a wild card team. But you'd like to have the home game. You'd like to have the security of making sure that you don't need help from anybody else to get into the playoffs. And I'm sure that Jacksonville would like to win the division as opposed to be a wild card team just because they play better on the road. So Jacksonville's got some work to do. They have three home games. The Tennessee Titans in their next three will be at home and then two on the road. And then they play their final two games at home. So they're a little bit different. Three of their last five are at home as well but they're not in order. Jacksonville's playing home, 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 away, away, and Houston's playing home, away, away, home, home. And the final game of the season, regular season for both teams, is going to be against one another, like I said, in Tennessee on December 31st at 1 p.m. Eastern time, which will be a huge game for both teams. Now, if you're a Jaguars fan, you're hoping that this game won't decide it. If you're a Tennessee game, you're hoping that this game won't decide it. But, you know, it, it really comes down to jockeying at this point and taking care of business when you're playing other teams. So Jacksonville needs Tennessee <clears throat> to lose, and they have to win. They'll get out of the wild card and jump back into the top four. Tennessee will fall back to the wild card, and they'll be going back and forth. The good thing about the AFC South is typically there's nothing to talk about or write home about the last couple seasons. Houston typically wins the division because the division's just terrible, and Houston does enough to be 8-8 eight and eight or 7-9 and nine or whatever it may be at the end of it all. And Indianapolis, you know, Andrew Luck, he was good for a little while, but I feel like people have figured him out. I feel he gets injured a lot, unfortunately. I feel that, you know, he throws too many interceptions. So the Colts are not the team that they used to be. They don't even have Luck this year. 
And even with him, I don't know how good they would be. I think they'd still be behind in the division, maybe not 3-8. and eight. Houston, with Tom Savage, they've done better than I thought that they would do, but they've been quiet, and they're three games behind Jacksonville and Tennessee. And then as far as, as the Jaguars and, and Tennessee go, it's the first time in a long time that you've seen these two logos in a playoff hunt, in a playoff race. It's good for both teams. And the benefit of it is that the rest of the AFC is not doing – as well as the Jaguars and as the Titans, which is leaving them both in, in good footing right now because Buffalo, who is 6-5, and five, they done, they've done some good things, but they've had issues after starting so strong. Cincinnati is 5-6. and six. They have a losing record. Los Angeles, Oakland, they, are, they have a losing record at 5-6. and six. Baltimore, 6-5. Six and five. So, you know, Jacksonville and Tennessee have benefited from this, and they've benefited from Kansas City, falling after starting with a win on the road in Foxborough against the Patriots. So, you know, the Jaguars and the Titans, if they keep winning, then they're in really good footing to lock up three and five as as the two spots out of the top six that will make it in the AFC. So, you know, it kind of looks like if, if both of them stay on the wagon, they're both going to the playoffs. It's just who's getting a home game and some security and who has to play on the road. And, you know, Jacksonville's shown that they can win in both areas, so – I think it's, you know, good for them either way, but they got to keep winning. And like I said, I'm sure that Doug Marone and Nate Hackett and Todd Wash and Tom Coughlin and Shad Khan and, and all of them, I'm, I'm sure they want to win the division and not just get in by the skin of their teeth. So it'll be interesting to see where we go from here, but you can be sure to follow it on wakeupcalldt.com because, as always, I will be in Jacksonville covering these games, and I have a very busy December thanks to the Jaguars hosting multiple home games back-to-back-to-back before the end of 2017, which is very exciting. We'll take a step aside here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT for a very quick fast break. When we come out of the fast break, we'll do wall-to-wall NFL coverage, give my thoughts on what happened in Week 12 outside of Jacksonville's game, and we will get into the Ingredients to Success signature segment, proudly presented to you by Utica Pizza Company. This is a wake-up call, Fast Break. Hi, this is Kira from Looking Glass Events, where we're always giving you a reason to celebrate. Whether you have a small business, large business, personal event, or wedding, we are available to plan and coordinate your dream event to life. Every detail, every step, Looking Glass Events is working with you all the way. Call us at 315-702-4653. That's 315-702-4653. Or contact us through our website, lgweddingsandevents.com. Looking Glass Events giving you a reason to celebrate. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is located on 3680 Milton Avenue in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is proud to be both. It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315 315- 487-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on wakeupcalldt.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on mixlr.com backslash wakeupcalldt. Happy to be here with you and appreciate you tuning in. To today's broadcast, a wake-up call with Dan Satora. The show goes live every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And I'm very happy to have you here on the broadcast with me. As we continue the morning menu, proudly presented by the Market Diner on 2100 Park Street in Syracuse, New York, in the regional market across from Destiny, USA. It is an amazing place for you to go out to 
the the food is is absolutely wonderful and you don't come out smelling like a greasy spoon and that's the thing that i really really love about the market diner is not only is the food good but you come out smelling the way that you smelled when you went in you know it's not you don't come out smelling like you went into a deep fryer so you know, as far as the service, the quality of food, the atmosphere, it's close to everything. It's right outside the bus station, right outside the train station, right in the regional market, right by the Chief Stadium, right by the new Embassy Suites Hotel, right by Destiny USA, right by downtown, out, you know, right off of a bunch of major highways, right outside of Lights on the Lake and Onondaga Lake Parkway. It's an extremely centralized location that's extremely good. So get over to the Market Diner on 2100 Park Street in Syracuse, New York, in the regional market across from Destiny, USA, and have yourselves a very good time while you're there. Get the Dance Tour special, Belgian waffle cut in half, filled with a bacon, egg, and cheese omelet. You will not regret it. So much appreciation, and thank you for all that you do. Here on today's broadcast, very happy to share with you that uh, that we're going to be discussing here week 12 inside of the NFL and just what I took away from the action that happened this past weekend. The Vikings, and I went into these games already, so I'm not going to spend too much time. This will be a rapid fire of sorts. Vikings, you know, they did what they needed to do. They took away the tiebreaker that Detroit had over them earlier on in the season. They extended themselves out to a 9-2 and two record, and they've all but won the division. They're very close. You know, they got to keep doing what they're doing. I mean, Detroit still has six wins, but they go up against the Vikings. That tiebreaker's gone now. Chargers took care of the Cowboys. Cowboys have been absolutely terrible without Ezekiel Elliott, uh, Tyron Smith on their offensive line, and Sean Lee at the linebacker position. The Redskins took care of the Giants as they should. The Skins are still in footing to, you know, have some type of hope if they can take care of the Cowboys the second time around. Falcons playing up against the Bucks. Falcons looking more like they're in, you know, postseason form than they did to start off the season. Tevin Coleman, in the absence of Devontae Freeman for the second straight week, had two touchdowns on the ground, hoping that Devontae will get healthy sooner than later. Two touchdowns on the ground for Tevin Coleman, and he had 97 yards on the ground as well 5.1 yards a carry julio jones had 253 yards receiving in a single game and two touchdowns insanity he had all but 115 of the 368 receiving yards by the atlanta falcons mike evans on the other side was the best receiver once again for yardage but there was not a touchdown thrown he had 78 yards in the game Deshaun Jackson was behind him and OJ Howard seems to be a favorite of Ryan Fitzpatrick three catches for 52 yards after being pretty insignificant in the past Cameron Brait one catch for six yards uh, Doug Martin did nothing which I anticipated Jacquez Rogers is getting involved though he's getting just as many carries if not more than Doug Martin with Ryan Fitzpatrick they're using them both and Fitzy uh, you know he handed the ball off to Doug Martin seven times and to Jacquez Rogers eight times and they both had right around 30 yards rushing so neither one of them did very well running the ball but it's nice to see more even instead of Jacquez Rogers getting one carry for three yards Tampa Bay four and seven they're looking more like Tampa Bay Atlanta at seven and four is looking more like Atlanta as they move forward next game up Cleveland at Cincinnati well Cleveland has all but wrapped up the number one pick they're 0 and 11 they're the only team that hasn't won a game this season the comedy of it, the craziness about this is that the Giants are so bad, but they've been able to defeat two teams that were potential Super Bowl contenders in Kansas City and Denver. And then San Francisco was able to win over the Giants. So it's it's crazy that the teams that looked pretty bad this year, nobody looks as bad as Cleveland. And Cleveland seems to always be at the bottom rung of the ladder, which is really Sad to see, and I'm sorry to Cleveland fans about that. Cincinnati's looking better at 5-6. and six. Believe it or not, they're still in the playoff hunt. They didn't have to do much in this game. Randy Bullock had three field goals in the second quarter. Tyler Croft had a touchdown in the third quarter of this game, and Joe Mixon ran the ball in in the fourth quarter. This game was never in favor of Cleveland after Cleveland went up 3 to nothing. Beyond that, it, it was 7-3, to 10-3, 13-3 all the way down to 30 to 16. So they had the lead very, very early. 
and they had it for just a couple minutes, and that was it. So Cleveland's own 11, Cincinnati still in the playoff hunt. Sad to see Cleveland doing what they're doing, but Deshaun Kaiser, I do think he can be the quarterback of the future. I just think, you know, that there's a lot of things that need to happen in Cleveland. And, to, you know, they always end up blaming the head coach and the quarterback, and I think that that's really ignorant because it's two people on a team that features 11 on offense, 11 on defense, an entire special teams unit, 53 on the roster that can actually suit up and be there, plus an entire coaching staff, front office, and president. So if you're going to make accusations on, you know, it's this person's fault or that person's fault, yeah, you know, if you have a quarterback that's throwing nine interceptions a game, okay, or three interceptions a game or two interceptions a game and not throwing any touchdowns, yeah, it's probably time to switch it. You know, but you also have to look at you also have to look at your offensive coordinator, your defensive coordinator, your head coach, and so on and so forth. For Tennessee and Indianapolis, this was a closer game than I think Tennessee wanted it to be. They needed it to win. They needed this win to get above Jacksonville and have the same record, as I said earlier, of 7-4, and four, but they needed the victory to have that tiebreaker over the Jaguars come into effect once again. They did almost nothing in this game until later on in the matchup. They were trailing Indianapolis from 38 seconds left in the second quarter all the way to 5.59 left in the game. DeMarco Murray had a one-yard touchdown run, God bless me, to go up 20-16, to 16, and that was their first lead since being up 6-3 to three in the matchup. So 20-16 to 16 was the difference in this game. It was Delaney Walker at the end of the third quarter, and in the fourth quarter with about six minutes to go, DeMarco Murray, Indianapolis' defense just didn't finish out the game, and that ended in a four-point loss. It could have been a big-time win for Indy, in a haphazard season, but it ended up helping out Tennessee over Jacksonville. Buffalo at Kansas City. Kansas City has been an absolute shell of themselves. They beat the Patriots on the road against the Patriots. They're the only team to defeat the Eagles this season. They start the season off 5-0. and Then they lose to the Steelers and they lose at the Raiders, which turns out to be a bad loss because the Raiders aren't that good this year. They defeat the Broncos which you needed to do because the Broncos are atrocious. And then they lost to the Cowboys, to the Giants, and to the Bills. They're on a three-game losing streak after starting the season 5-0. and If they lose at the Jets, they might be out of this thing. They have at the Jets, the Raiders at home, the Chargers at home, the Dolphins at home, and at the Broncos. On paper, the Kansas City Chiefs that you thought you knew should win all five of these games and end the season 11-5. and But Kansas City and what they become, they could easily lose to the Jets or to the Raiders as we move forward. So Kansas City's got to get back on the horse and figure it out. As far as Buffalo goes, yeah, they had a three-game losing streak, but they just snapped it winning in Kansas City. And not only that, they've defeated Kansas City. They've defeated the Falcons. They defeated the Jets, who have shown some moments of, I should say, I shouldn't say the Jets have done much, okay? I shouldn't say that. They're four and seven this season. But you had to win that game, and they took care of it. You know, where that game could get a little bit dicey, it seems like the AFC East always has interesting games against one another. So, I mean, you know, if you're Buffalo, you have to win that game between you and the Jets. And then defeating the Broncos, that looked like a good win at the beginning of the season. Defeating the Falcons was obviously huge, and that was in Atlanta. And then you defeat the Chiefs in Kansas City. The next game up is a big one for Buffalo. They're at home against the Patriots this Sunday, December 3rd at 1 p.m. Eastern time. This would be a massive game for them. They beat the Patriots and they go 7-5. and five. That's put them in really good footing for a potential run at the playoffs, which is why I said Tennessee and Jacksonville are doing well right now, but they can't become complacent saying, well, one of us is going to be the wild card and the other one of us is going to win the division. There's teams like Buffalo that are trying to charge ahead late. Miami and New England... New England won this game 35-17, to yet Miami did show me some, some good things in this game. I was slightly impressed by Miami in this game. The fact that they were able to get the fumble return for a touchdown by Rashad Jones in the second quarter right at the beginning. Kenyon Drake was able to score. You know, the team did some good things, but they only scored half of the time. They scored in the second and fourth quarter, but not the first and the third. 
So, and they gave up four touchdowns to Tom Brady. Not that Tom can't do it against anybody, but Miami looked a little bit better than I thought they would. I mean, Miami, the way they've been, could have lost this game 35 to nothing. They made it somewhat interesting, but obviously were totally outplayed by New England. Uh, Carolina at the Jets. This was probably one of the best games of Week 12, and you didn't expect it to be. It started off as a field goal game in the first quarter, and then it was a little bit more a Carolina than it was New York at halftime, 12-10 to 10 in favor of Carolina. Robbie Anderson scored the last touchdown of either team in the first half and the first touchdown of either team in the second half. He has been amazing. I'm very happy to have him on my fantasy roster. And to just give you a note here, he had 146 yards and two touchdowns, six catches for 146 yards, targeted 10 times, two touchdowns in the game. His game log for the season is as such. He had one touchdown in the team's first six games. Since then, he has had at least one touchdown in all five games that they've played so far. So you look at that. One touchdown in six games to start the season, five straight games with a touchdown after that. Robbie Anderson is trending up, and if you didn't know who he was, get to know him now. Second season out of Temple. He was under Matt Rule when he was at Temple, who was a really good coach for the Temple Owls. And Robbie Anderson's been doing a good job is the number one target for the New York Jets this season. Find somebody who's been more consistent. A touchdown in each of the in each of the last five weeks for you in fantasy. A touchdown getting in the end zone five straight weeks. Huge. Huge, huge, huge. And a total difference from the first half of the season they played so far to the second half. One touchdown, six games. Five, you know, at least a touchdown in the last five games and two most recently. So he has six touchdowns in five games after getting one touchdown in six games. Next up, uh, Chicago and Philadelphia. Philly won this one easily. They were in Philly. Chicago's terrible. I don't have to say much about this. Philadelphia is 10 and one. First team to double digit wins this season. And they have played one heck of a season and have been absolutely immaculate. Zach Ertz got back to getting into the end zone. He did it in the first quarter. Nelson Aguilar, if you forgot about him, maybe you should keep him on the roster. He got one touchdown outright, and then he recovered a fumble to get a second touchdown. So kind of piggybacking off the success of your teammate, but he got you the points in fantasy. For Seattle and San Fran, Seattle took care of business on the road. I thought they would, and they won this game 24-13. to Eddie Lacy, he still looks terrible. It's it's really sad. He had his best game, 17 carries for 46 yards, but your best running back is Russell Wilson. Your best quarterback on the team is Russell Wilson. Paul Richardson did pretty well, and, uh, and Jimmy Graham got a touchdown. Richardson had 70 yards. Baldwin was held quiet, two catches for 25 yards, so I guess that's a positive for San Fran in a season where they are 1-10. and 10. Jimmy Garoppolo, I think they were trying to save him for next year, but C.J. Beathard got hurt, so Jimmy had to go out there. Jimmy goes out, he's 2-for-2 two two and throws a touchdown. C.J. Beathard was 22-38 of 38 and threw an interception with no touchdowns. So it took two tries for, for Jimmy Garoppolo to throw a touchdown, and in 38 tries, nothing for C.J. Beathard in the game. So it's, uh, it's pretty crazy how that works, but I, I can't believe if you make a trade for Jimmy Garoppolo why you wouldn't put him out there right away. I mean, I guess they've kind of given up on the season, and they don't want to risk Jimmy getting hurt. Maybe that's where they're looking at it now. That would be a reasonable occurrence if that's what they're choosing to do. Oakland at Denver. This game looks interesting, but it wasn't until the fourth quarter. Oakland was up 21 to nothing. Nobody scored in the first quarter. 14 nothing Oakland at halftime, all in the second quarter scoring. 21 nothing at the end of 3, and then Denver outscored Oakland 14 to nothing in the fourth quarter. Because like other teams that I mentioned, Oakland's defense didn't know how to close out this game. There's been every single quarterback under the sun. Everyone on the roster has played for the Denver Broncos at the quarterback position. Trevor Simeon, Brock Osweiler, and Paxton Lynch have all played. Simeon finished this game and looked like they should have never taken the ball out of his hands because he got him back into play and back into it. They actually had a fighting chance under him. So it's interesting to see how this game went. But ultimately, Oakland got the victory. The way that the division looks right now is that Los Angeles is 5-6. and six, Oakland's 5-6. and six. 
Denver's done at three and eight. Kansas, for the most part, unless they go crazy in these last few weeks. I can't say anybody's done, but Denver looks like they're they're baked. Not half-baked. They look like they're almost fully baked and ready to come out of the oven. Kansas City at 6-5, and five, they're in a danger zone because L.A. is charging up at 5-6, and six, literally. And it's funny how L.A. can't sell tickets. And during the Rams-Saints game, when the Saints did something really good, I thought the flag was going to call it back because all these people were cheering. It turns out that... L.A. fans, it's kind of like going to a Broadway show in Los Angeles. They're not cheering for the Rams. They don't have a favorite team. The home team's not necessarily their favorite. They're just happy to see a football game in L.A. So there's the, the, the amount of cheering for the New Orleans Saints try to come back was very embarrassing for having a home game. Yet, your Chargers are not out of the playoffs, and your Rams are in the playoffs if they started today. Both L.A. teams could make the playoffs, so these people need to get their butts in the seats, start buying some Chargers and Rams apparel, and start showing some respect for your teams in L.A. before you lose two more franchises, which would, if you count the Raiders twice before, that would be five franchises that Los Angeles has had and lost. So, be smart about how you treat these teams. The next game up is L.A. versus New Orleans, and L.A. won this game 26-20. New Orleans surged all the way back against Washington to win the game last week. It's funny, New Orleans and Jacksonville look very similar in the last two weeks. They were quiet in the first half, surged in the second half, and a week ago came back to win the game. And then this week, surged in the second half, but came up short. Both of them did the same thing. The Saints are 8-3, and three, and the Rams are also 8-3. and three. Both teams uh, looking at 4-2 and two at home for the Rams, 4-2 and two away for the Saints. So very evenly matched coming out of this one. And going into it, you know, the Rams have had a nice crack. You know, the season kind of, schedule kind of worked in their favor. They had a crack at Minnesota and a crack at New Orleans, or, or pardon me, they had a, uh, oh no, they did. They had a crack at Minnesota and a crack at New Orleans in the last two weeks. Two teams that they're most likely going to see in the playoffs if all continues to move forward the way it has been going, they won one and they lost the other. So, you know, the Rams got to see Minnesota not on film, but face-to-face, and New Orleans face-to-face. Jared Goff in this game did pretty good. Two two touchdowns, one pick, 354 yards passing. Breeze had one touchdown, no interceptions. Elvin Kamara was amazing. He was a leading rusher and receiver, and this is not the first time he's done it this season. He had 188 yards of total offense and two touchdowns one catching and one running the ball cooper cup finally got to a good place in fantasy it's been a few weeks here it feels like it's been forever 116 yards did a good job sammy watkins in the absence of robert woods scored a touchdown which i thought would happen both former bills receivers and it seemed like robert woods was trending higher but with him being out due to injury it stood to believe at least in my mind that Sammy would pick up the slack, and if there was going to be a touchdown, that it would go to him in Wood's absence, and it did exactly that. The last couple games here to discuss, uh, Green Bay at Pittsburgh. This was a really, really good game that we didn't think was going to be a good game, did we, folks? Xavier Grimble had a one-yard pass from Ben Roethlisberger. Raise your hand if you know who Xavier Grimble is. Thank you. And if for all of you that raised your hand, I love it because... I love saying to raise your hand because you do it, and I can't even see it. He's in his second season out of USC at the tight end position, for those of you that didn't know. Second season out of USC. So Grimble scores, then Hunley hits Randall Cobb and Jamal Williams for touchdown passes in the first quarter alone. Martavis Bryant scores the only points of either team in the second quarter, 14-14 at halftime, after Ben Roethlisberger goes to Antonio Brown, for the two-point conversion. In the third quarter, Devontae Adams, who I told you is your best bet at wide receiver for Green Bay in the absence of Aaron Rodgers, he gets a touchdown. Then Antonio Brown gets it. So now we're tied 21-21 to after three. And in the fourth quarter, Antonio Brown gets a touchdown. Jamal Williams ties the game. Chris Boswell, with no time left on the clock, as time's expiring, 53-yard field goal to win in regulation, 31-28. to This was supposed to be an amazing Sunday night football game between Big Ben 
and Aaron Rodgers. It turned out to be an amazing Sunday night football game without Aaron Rodgers. It says a lot about Pittsburgh's defense because they're the number, they're supposed to be the number one team in the AFC. So it says a lot about Pittsburgh's defense. And it also says that Green Bay can still create some of those awesome moments. I mean, this this easily could be an instant classic Sunday night game to watch. And you go back and look at the film and you're like, but that's not number 12 under center. It's right. It's Brett Hundley. He did a good job in this game. Brett Hundley would finish the game with three touchdowns, no interceptions, and he will pa- he passed a touchdown to Jamal Williams, Randall Cobb, and Devontae Adams, as I mentioned. The only person hurting in all of this is Jordy Nelson. He is, and I said, every quarterback has their favorites. Jordy Nelson doesn't seem to have that relationship with Brett Hundley like he has with Aaron Rodgers, and it's showing in fantasy because he has become insignificant. Houston at Baltimore. This game was fun on Monday night to see Houston face off against the Baltimore Ravens on the road in Baltimore, Maryland. The Texans made it interesting at the end of this game by surging back late and trying to make it happen, but Justin Tucker took care of business. The offense didn't have to do much anything for Baltimore in this game. Javoris Allen and Alex Collins got back-to-back touchdown runs in the second quarter. After that, it was Justin Tucker, Justin Tucker, Justin Tucker. He took care of business with three field goals to fend off the Houston Texans who fall to 4-7, and seven, helping out the Jaguars and the Titans. But Baltimore helps themselves out to get to 6-5 and five and to put themselves in a good footing for the playoff standings if the playoffs began today, the Baltimore Ravens have the sixth and final spot at six and five, winning the tiebreaker over Buffalo based on win percentage in AFC conference games. We'll take a final step aside for a fast break and wrap up with ingredients to success centering on Syracuse basketball in just a moment. This is a wake up call fast break. Utica pizza company spells family. Your family, my family, their family. The recipes that they have shared with each other throughout the years and have now been so gracious to share them with us. I can sit here and talk with you about all the great things that are on the menu, but we'd be here forever. So let me say this, Utica Pizza Company is second to none. And now you can bring it home with you and you can dine in in the restaurant. UticaPizzaCompany.com will give you all the information that you need. And let me say, these Utica Greens, they're the best. Utica Pizza Company, Call them and place your order at 315-214-3060. That's 315-214-3060. Families break bread at Utica Pizza Company. For all of us that have always wanted our favorite restaurant to come to us, it's now a reality in Central New York with It's a Utica Thing, with Utica Pizza Company bringing their wonderful recipes that they've handed down through generations to you, to your events, to your business, to your home. It's a Utica Thing, proudly bringing Utica Pizza Company on wheels to your location. Call 315-738-8946. That's 315-738-8946 to bring Utica Pizza Company to your doorstep with It's a Utica Thing. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash DT. It's now time to get into the final portion of every Tuesday show. We normally do it around 10.50 a.m. Eastern Time, but we went a little bit over this morning talking about the NFL, which is totally fine. I appreciate you listening in, and thank you for joining me here. And to finish out the show, it is the Ingredients to Success, proudly brought to you by Utica Pizza Company on 628 South Main Street in North Syracuse, New York. It is right by the Syracuse Hancock International Airport, right outside of Maddie Dale. It's close to Maddie Dale, Liverpool, North Syracuse, close to a bunch of the highways. Very, very easy to get to. And you can get to it by going to 628 South Main Street in North Syracuse, New York, across from the Sweetheart Corners, located in the Mains Plaza. So right in the Mains Plaza, you'll find Utica Pizza Company, and it's right by Sweetheart Corners in North Syracuse. 315-214-3060 is the number to call. 315-214-3060 to get in touch with them for catering, for takeout or for delivery, 
315-214-3060. It's getting close to lunchtime, so don't wait another minute. Call them right now, 315-214-3060. You don't want your pizza. You want your pizza now. I mean, honestly, you want your pizza, your chicken riggies, your Utica greens, your Philly steak sandwiches. You want to order it now so you can pick it up sooner than later. Beat the rushing lunch crowd. Beat that rush time crowd at lunchtime today by calling 315-214-3060 or by heading over to 628 South Main Street in North Syracuse, New York to the Mains Plaza where you will find Utica Pizza Company. Utica Pizza proudly brings you the ingredients to success, which is my specialty segment in discussing ingredients to success for a team, for a player, for an organization, for life in general. Today, it's about Syracuse basketball and ingredients to success. They withstood 20 lead changes and 15 ties in their game against Maryland. I thought it would be their first real big test of the season. I thought that both teams would be pretty evenly matched. I wasn't going to be surprised if the game was close and it would show us where the teams were at. Well, it did exactly that. It didn't disappoint by any stretch of my imagination. It did what I thought it was going to do, and it turned out in favor of the Syracuse Orange, but not before Kevin Herter hurled a shot as time was expiring that got way too close to the basket for comfort. His half-court shot going in wouldn't have been any surprise after he went 7 for 9 from three-point range in the game. That's 7 for 9, folks. Kevin Herter, and he didn't come in as the best three-point shooter on the team. That w- that went to his teammates Wild Wildy. What, pardon me. To his teammates Wiley and Mickens were actually the best ones that, when it came to shooting the three pointer, those were the best opportunities that they had. A Wiley and well, let me get this right. Dion Wiley at forty four point eight percent and Jared Nickens at fifty five point six percent. Instead, it was him, Kevin Herter, who got the job done. He went seven for nine, which is seventy eight percent from three-point range. Absolute insanity. So what are the ingredients to success? Syracuse never lost their composure. They never lost their cool. There were fouls called that might have been questionable. There were opportunities going after loose balls. Balls. There were <laughs> there was opportunities for loose balls that turned into fouls being called on Syracuse. There were opportunities to block shots that turned into fouls being called on Syracuse. There were shots that rolled in and out. There were multiple jumpers that didn't fall. Yet Syracuse did not give up. Kevin Herter just kept taking shots from long range and they continue to fall. I mean, you look at what he scored, 21 points beyond the arc. 21 points, 7 for 9. 21 points just from beyond the arc. They could have given up because Kevin Herter was hurting him too much. They could have given up because... When they tried to fight and be tenacious on defense or in a loose ball opportunity, they got called for seemingly, it felt like, more fouls than Maryland in the game. So you could say, okay, you know what? I'm frustrated. I'm going after the ball to block a shot. I get called for a foul. Brahma Sidibe fouls out. I can focus on that. I can focus on the fact that Kevin Herter seemingly cannot be stopped. I can focus on the fact that Maryland seems to have an answer for everything we do. I can focus on the fact that when I dive for the loose ball and I have, and I feel like I have the ball in my hands, I get called for slapping the wrist and it's a foul on me. Syracuse could have given up, but the ingredients to success were composure, belief, determination. This team's not getting a lot of respect around the country. They're, they were ranked going into the season in the eighties behind some schools that you wouldn't even think were universities. If I read you off a list, and maybe I'll do that tomorrow, you'd be surprised when I'm saying, well, this team and this team, and you're going, that's a school? When did they start playing college basketball D1? So, and it's no offense to the school, it's just making a statement. Syracuse is regarded lower maybe than they've ever been. So, they don't have the respect, but they've been determined. They don't have the country believing that they could do much of anything, but they persevere. They believe in themselves. This team, with four true freshmen, a graduate transfer, and four scholarship players returning, with only two of them getting real time last year, in Frank Howard and Tyus Battle, the ingredients to fail are there. 
but yet Syracuse has turned them into ingredients to success. Tyus Battle came back from hurting his hip last game when he fell and came down hard on it, on his right side. He came back in this game and he went to work. That's one of the ingredients to success, is that Tyus Battle didn't give up. He fought through it. And whether it was hurting him a little bit or not, he didn't show it. And in this matchup, he ended the game with 18 points in 37 minutes, 50% from the field, 7 of 14. He had a block shot, a steal, and two assists to go with two rebounds, and he did have two turnovers in the game. That was an ingredient to success. Another ingredient to success is the fact that Frank Howard, who is the only person that's played in multiple games at 40 minutes consistently recently, played in 40 minutes of this game, and his shot has gotten so much better. He's played so much better. Yeah, he was one of seven from three point, but he was five of 10 inside the arc and was 50% from there. End of the game with 15 points, 10 assists. He had a double-double in assists. So that's something you hear about a lot. When you think double-double, you think rebounds and points. Then maybe you think rebounds and assists or rebounds and blocks with points. But it's always points, rebounds. Well, he had a double-double with 10 assists and 15 points in this game. Seven steals in the game. He did have four turnovers. Got to condense that. But 15 points, 10 assists, seven steals, and five rebounds. Man could have had a quadruple double if there was five more minutes left in the game. Frank Howard has been a huge ingredient to success. Another ingredient to success is who I call three-point play O'Shea. And that is because of his two tough takes in the second half at the rim for old-fashioned three-point plays where he got the shot, tough shot, got fouled off balance, and made the free throw to follow. If he didn't do that one time, they would have lost the game. He did it twice, securing the win, 40 minutes of play for the true freshman, 15 points, 5 for 18 from the field, missed all of his three-pointers, went 0 for 5, had 13 rebounds in the game, his second double-double in a row, and third double-double of the season as a true freshman. They've only played six games. So 50% of the time that they've played, he has a double-double, including the last two games in a row. Another ingredient to success. O'Shea Brissett has come on in such a huge way to provide relief for Tyus Battle and Frank Howard. It's undeniable his worth to the team. Barama Sidibe, despite the fact that he fouled out of the game, had four rebounds, eight points, and two blocks in the game. So he did give something to the game. He played in 22 minutes. Mark Dolezal played in 30 of 40 minutes of the game. And Mar- Marek, I should say Marek Dolezal, he had 10 points in the game, seven rebounds, a steal. He did have three turnovers, but he almost had a double-double himself. And Marek playing in 30 of 40 minutes when some people thought maybe he would be redshirted because he didn't seem to have the muscle and he's coming from overseas in Slovakia. Well, I think overseas prepares players a lot faster than they're prepared here in America. I just feel like when they're 18 years old, they're playing in like world championships and whatnot. So to me, Marek came over here seemingly, from what I'm watching, more than prepared to play the game. Nobody's getting redshirted this year outside of, I mean, maybe if you can use it on Howard Washington because... Bayheim hasn't been using him, but Marek is going to play in 30 of 40 minutes off the bench. That was huge. You look at that. Bayheim says, you know, my starters by how many minutes they play. Well, based on that, Marek Dolezal was one of his starters because he played more minutes than Pascal Chukwu and more minutes than Matthew Moyer by far. Moyer only played nine minutes in the game. So ingredients to success, your bench takes care of some, some points, 18 points from the bench. Your bench, take, your bench takes care of rebounds, 11 rebounds. Your bench helps out across the board. Steals and blocks happen from Barama and Marek. You look at the offensive side of the ball. Frank had to get more involved offensively this year. He's done it in every game. Tyus Battle has to be the scorer that we think he can be. He's done that. O'Shea Brissett has to step up and act like he's been a, been a forward on the team for the last two, three years. And he has done that early on. O'Shea Brissett seems to not whimper under pressure, cry under pressure, get nervous under pressure. He seems to thrive under pressure. 
So this nail biter to the wire ended with Orange ed edging out the Terrapins 72 to 60 or 72 to 70 in this game. I don't know where my mind is going. 72 to 70 in this matchup and the ingredients to success. Don't listen to the outside noise. Don't care about how long you guys have played together. Don't care about what people say about your strength. Play through injury like Tyus Battle has done. Play through people expecting you to be mediocre. Play through the hate like Frank Howard. And do not let things like the fouls that were called on loose balls and blocks or Barama Sidibe fouling out. Don't let those things take a toll on your team. And for O'Shea... Go after these games without any jitters of being a true freshman. All of those things have been ingredients to success, and Syracuse is 6-0. and And like I said, I thought this game would be a big test to show where Syracuse is at right now. Well, I think that they got the nation's attention, and they have the opportunity to do it two more times in a big way as they face off against number 2 Kansas this Saturday, December 2nd at, at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. And that game will be played in Miami, Florida. And then against UConn, they will be playing at Madison Square Garden, a familiar place for Syracuse over history, but a first time for a bunch of these guys on December 5th at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Two big games in three days' time, Kansas and Connecticut, and two more opportunities for Syracuse to show the nation where they're at. If they win one of those two games, there's an opportunity to argue them into the top 25. If they beat Kansas, they might shoot right up to 17 or 15 in the polls, after not being in them. So a big game coming up and a healthy win to bounce off of and surge you toward this next game. So definitely you got something that you needed to go up against Kansas to give you some momentum and some positive feeling about your guys around you. You'll hear from the Syracuse players on tomorrow's show. Tomorrow's broadcast at 9 a.m. Eastern time, 9 to 11 a.m. Eastern time on tomorrow's show. I'm very excited to be joined by Four of the Syracuse players, you will hear from Barama Sidibe, Frank Howard, Tyus Battle, and O'Shea Brissett. You'll hear from all four of those gentlemen inside of Wednesday, November 29th show. And there'll also be plenty more for you, so stay close to Facebook at, <clears throat> at Wake Up Call DT, on Twitter at Call DT, and on Instagram at Wake Up Call underscore DT. You don't want to miss out on any of the opportunities that are to come I'm very, very excited about that. Wednesday, November 29th, we have a lot to discuss. And like I said, the four Syracuse players will be joining me on the broadcast, which will be very exciting. Also joining me right at 9 a.m. this Wednesday, November 29th, will be Mike Wheeler of the OCC women's basketball team. Their head coach will be joining me. So I'm pumped for that and excited about the opportunity. And I will be joined as well. Uh, coming up here this week by Jason Leone. So I can't wait for the opportunity to speak with Jason as well. So a lot of good stuff coming up here. Cannot wait for it. Cannot wait for the opportunity to share it all with you. Looking at, looking forward to it. Jason Leone of Oswego Men's Basketball, head coach of the team, as well as Mike Wheeler, women's basketball head coach for OCC. And you're going to hear from four Syracuse players. That's all tomorrow, Wednesday, November 29th, between 9 and 11 a.m. Eastern Time, and so much more. God bless, be well, and I'll talk with you soon.